against Switzerland. To give you some idea of the kind of impact Ovechkin's having, he's not eligible for the National Hockey League entry draft until 2004. He misses being eligible in this year's draft by just two days. There's a guy by the name of Nikolai Zherdev on the Russian team this year. There's a very good chance, 50-50 anyways, that he could be the number one pick this year, yet nobody here is talking about him at all. Completely overshadowed playing on the third and fourth line to Ovechkin, who's on the number one line for the Russians. And I wonder if there's anything special here today for a guy like Ovechkin. And keep in mind too, though, the Finns have a forward, Tuomo Rutu, is probably the best forward in this tournament. He won't want to be upstaged by some 17-year-old kid trying to steal the spotlight. Now, as you mentioned, Bob, Ovechkin is not eligible for the NHL entry draft until next June. So NHL GMs and scouts can't get their hands on him, but they can get a look at him. And so can you, because he'll be facing Team Finland on TSN today. in the game. Phone lines are busier than ever across Canada because Ring In and Win is coming to a close soon, but there's still time to join the thousands who've already won. From a guaranteed $500 off and more, you could even win your vehicle. Plus get 0% purchase financing. Happy holidays. Hurry, GM Ringin' and Win ends January 13th. Nice putt, Frank. Come on, Dad, focus. Widen your stance a little. Don't slouch. And don't screw up. This is the big leagues. What are you doing? Keep around the ball. That was pathetic. Sorry. Yeah, well, sorry does we cut it. The 2003 Double IHF World Junior Hockey Championship on TSN is brought to you by Esso at Esso Weird Drivers 2. By RBC Financial Group, supporting hockey dreams in your community from grassroots to Olympics. By Nike Hockey, question what was with what could be. And by McDonald's. There's a little McDonald's in everyone. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Metro Center in Halifax. I'm Gino Retta. It's great to have you with us today. Semi-final action of the World Junior Hockey Championship. Opening face-off of Finland and Russia coming up momentarily. But right now, for their thoughts, let's go down to ice level. Gordon Miller and Pierre Maguire. Gentlemen. Thank you very much, Gino. The Russians have all the history, and they're the heavy favorites in this hockey game. But, Pierre, it's the Finns who have the resumes when you talk about high draft picks. Two top five picks that will be key in this hockey game for them today. And the Russians have the best offensive balance in this tournament, Gord. So it's really going to be important for the Finns' big players to step up defensively. Number one, Kerry Layton to the left of your screen. He's a big presence in goal. Second pick overall by the Atlanta Thrashers. Nani Pitkin, he's a big stopper on defense. Usually plays with top Biakula. That's going to be important tandem for the Finns. But the big thing for Pitkin, eliminate the speed and the skill early on of the Russians. Discourage them from entering the finish zone early on. And if they can do that, they'll have success. Last year, the Russians were heavily favored as well in likely the best game of the World Junior Hockey Championship. The Finns took the Russians to overtime before losing in the semifinal. Gino? Well, gentlemen, Finnish captain Tuomo Rutu, their team's leading scorer. All the preparations are done. He's ready to lead his teammates against Russia next. You like simple better than complicated. You like quick better than slow. So you speed pass to pay at ESO. It's fast. There's no fumbling with cash or cards. And it links to a credit card account you already have. To get your free speed pass, call us toll free or visit speedpass.ca. You'll like how easy it is to get where you need to be. How do we know? We're drivers too. This trip meant so much to us. So when it came to travel insurance, 
We wanted to deal with someone who understands. Someone who'd be there if we needed them. RBC Insurance. It's not about us. It's about you. RBC Insurance. We'll be there with the right solutions you need to make insurance fit your world. I am what hockey has been waiting for. Every shot is a shot at the big time. One shot closer to becoming one of the greatest players and greatest names of the most incredible game in the world. What's your dream? The 2003 IIHF World Junior Hockey Championship on TSN is brought to you by the Molson Canadian Bubba Collector Can. Dressed for a limited time in team jerseys, it's perfect for watching the game with the guys. By Chevrolet. Chevrolet is proud to support young Canadian talent through sponsorship of the IIHF World Junior Hockey Championship. And by Speed Stick. Welcome back to Halifax, everyone. Gord Miller along with Pierre Maguire. The first of two semifinals we'll show you live today on TSN. Will the Finns or the Russians get the first ticket to Sunday's gold medal game? Tonight's starting goaltenders are brought to you by Chevrolet. Tried, tested, and true. 19-year-old Kerry Leighton playing in his third and final World Junior Hockey Championship was the top goaltender in this tournament last year in the playoff MVP in the Finnish League last season as well. Andre Medvedev is back to the World Junior for the third time as well. He's seventh in the tournament in save percentage and was pulled from the gold medal game last year as the Russians rallied to beat Canada. He's a second round pick of the Calgary Flames. Eric Westerlund is the coach of the Finnish team. Once again, he was behind the bench last year for that heartbreaking loss of the Russians. Kerry Leighton was terrific in that hockey game as the Russians bombarded the Finnish goal with shot after shot. They lost a minute and 44 seconds into overtime. And Rafael Ismatov is the coach for the Russians, fired this year as the coach in St. Petersburg and replaced by Boris Mihailov, who many of you will remember from the 1972 Summit Series. The referee is Swedish. He is Ulf Ratbier. The linesman, Peter Fiola from the United States, and Michel Cormier is Canadian. Ratbier saying to me before the game, please make sure you say my name correctly. I said, with all due respect, sir, I've got 22 Russians to worry about. I'll see what I can do. And that really did happen. The Finns have to get off to a real good physical start here, Gord. They do not want to allow the Russian team to get their skill and speed game going. And every team in this tournament will tell you that the games in Sydney where Rod Bierre was working were called much tighter than the games here in Halifax. And the Finns will want to play a physical game, but they'll keep an eye on Rod Bierre as well to see how physically they can play. Tommy Maki faces off against Yuri Trubachov, number 15. We're underway. The Russians are in white. The Finns are in blue. Russia is the home team and will have the last change. Yoni Pitkinen, first round pick of the Flyers, hammered down by Ovechkin in the game's opening seconds. Ovechkin makes his presence felt in the first seconds as he hammers down Yoni Pitkinen. Dennis Grebyshkov picks it up for Russia. Grebyshkov playing in his third World Junior, part of that gold medal team a year ago. Fedor Tutin, former member of the Guelph Storm, backhands it in. Timonen back for Finland. He avoids a check from Ovechkin. And the puck moved up. You see Jokinen looking forward for the Finns. Koltsov tries to play that wide. Kirill Koltsov, a draft pick of the Vancouver Canucks, described as something of a head case by his own general manager, Brian Burke, in an interview earlier this week. Tarotuka, number 16, battling for it. Koltsov comes up with it. Kirill Koltsov. This Russian D is very quick and moves the puck extremely well. Long feed there out of the reach of Teratukin, and icing is the call. Well, Pierre, say hello to Alexander Ovechkin. I'll allow Yanni Pitkinen to do that. Alexander Ovechkin understands that Pitkinen's going to be playing against him all afternoon. One of the things a star player wants to do is create separation and a physical presence early. Ovechkin does oh. that on Yanni Pitkinen. Usually it's Pitkinen dishing out the punishment right there, the star player Ovechkin doing it to Pitkinen. Teratukin wins that draw for the Russians who kick it up into the slot. It goes Letisalo with a shot that deflected wide. 
Finns with an impressive 6 0 win over Slovakia in the quarterfinal yesterday. The Finns scored three times in their first three shots. Perezhogin flips it in. Alexander Perezhogin, one of the top scorers for the Russians. A Montreal first round pick who's battled knee problems for the last couple of years. He fights for it along the wall. And the puck leaves the zone as Perezhogin took a bump there from Mikkonen. In fact, Perishogan's knee was so bad, the Montreal Canadiens decided to fly him to Montreal last season to get him evaluated by the team doctors in Montreal. And one of them told me that his knee looked as if he'd operated on it himself. That's always a pleasant experience. Alexander Kagarodov bringing it through center ice. Kagarodov in Ottawa, second round pick. Back behind the goal, Lakeland leaves it there for Pitkin, who takes another bump, as he was at that time by Zherdev. So the two Russians who are highly rated for the draft have given Yoni Pitkin a tough time. But good scouting by the Russians. They know that Pitkin plays over 32 minutes a game, so they're body slamming him every time they get a chance. Zherdev runs into Mackey, gets it up to Kagarodov and steaming down the wing. Here comes Anchikov with a shot, and Leighton makes the save. Back to the point it goes, Kondratsyev with a shot. That stopped. Two good chances for the Russians here. Two and a half minutes into the hockey game. Zherdev, he's brought down, looks at the referee, no penalty. Adi Aho, number 13, just sidestepped the check from Kaigerodov, who almost put himself into his own bench. Adi Aho is an extremely smart player. He's not very big, but he's very, very gifted with hockey sense. Mikhail Lubushin, LA seventh round pick, leaves it behind the goal. And not as many first round picks in the Russian lineup as you might expect. It's the Finns who have all the first rounders. Artukin. And Jenny Artukin. Plays for Monk in the Quebec League. Drops it off for Grebyshkov. Dennis Grebyshkov walks in. Backhand shot that's off a of skate and wide. Dennis Grebyshkov falls in the corner. Even it clears it ahead to Jokinen. Used to Jokinen up there to Sean Bergenheim. And the puck is played back down into the finish zone. Yes, Kalainen sidesteps to check and plays it out of harm's way for the moment. You see Jokinen. Leaves it back there for Yaskalainen. Long lead feed there. Too far for the intended target, Hamisuka. Fedor Kutin, a range of graphic, brings down Suka. He looks back to the referee, no penalty there either. Pollution brings it ahead. Up there for Ovechkin, Alexander Ovechkin. For Alexander Pollution. He's bumped by Yaskalainen. Ovechkin falls, Pollution comes up with the puck, takes the shot at the flex just wide. Ovechkin bumped hard there in the corner by Yalis Vara. Puck still in. Koltsov leaves it there. Shot from well out. Trubachov with a shot. And Kerry Leighton has seen enough. Four minutes into the hockey game. Still no score between the Finns and the Russians. How far can Chevrolet Venture take you? With the best fuel efficiency in its class. As far as you want. And thanks to its standard CD player. And air conditioning. You'll be cool wherever you go. Temperature-wise, anyway. The 2003 Venture is five-star safety rated when equipped with optional side airbags with 0% purchase financing plus a chance to ring in and win. Only at your Chevrolet Oldsmobile dealer. Erika Vesterlin describes himself as a positive person, a motivator. He's got pretty good players to do that with. He really does. The players you really want to watch. Watch Tuan Morutu, number 15. He plays on the first line. Yussi Jokinen's a leading scorer for the Finns. And obviously on defense, Jakola and Pitkinen are going to have to be big stoppers. Right now, early on in this game, Russia's gaining the offensive blue line far too easily. The Finns have to establish more of a presence. Andre Teratuka, number 16, out there for the draw. Calgary second round pick. The Flames have three drafted players on this Russian lineup. Back to the point it goes. Labushin with a shot. Deflects in front. Leighton and knocks it away. Yoni Pitkin and back out there. And Perezhogin stole the puck from him. Perezhogin into the slot. Takes the shot. Deflected away. And a nice job there by the Finns as Juha Fagerstadt knocked that away. A slow start by the Finns. Probably Gord, major reason why they played last night. They didn't have a tough, arduous physical contest against the Slovaks. Nonetheless, they do have a quick turnaround here this afternoon. Perezhogin drops it off for Grigorenko. Igor Grigorenko, draft pick of the Detroit Red Wings. Leaves it there in front, it goes just outside Perejogin's reach. And the Russians all over the Finns here as we're five minutes into the hockey game. And that's why Leighton was such an important criteria for the Finns going into this thing. They really needed him to establish a presence early on, and he's done that. I see the call against the Russians, and here is Raphael Ishmatov's lineup. 
and Pollution, Trubachov, and o uh, Ovechkin. Those are the guys you really want to pay attention to up front. They are an unbelievable offensive trio. They create tons of offensive chances off the rush and off the cycle. Grabishkov is a big guy on defense. The first round pick of the Los Angeles Kings. He logs tons of minutes, and he's a leading plus, minor, plus minus player in this tournament at plus eight. Off the draw, the puck controlled by the Finns, but blocked quickly. Kagerodov, long lead feed there, and Anchikov steps in, but Anchikov is a step ahead offside. Dennis Grepikov, who mentioned a first-round pick of the Los Angeles Kings, and he's playing in his third World Junior as well, and you can't overstate how important that is. Well, we saw him do a little tap dance off the offensive blue line two sequences ago for the Russians, and that's one of the real strengths of his game, creating offense as well as being a really reliable defensive presence. One of only two first-round picks from the NHL in the Russian lineup. Medvedev leaves it there, and a... Chance there for Grebyshkov to clear it up. He hit the side of the net with that and turns it over now to Matty Aho. Aho in front for Tuomo Rutu. Fedor Tutin had him all tied up. And now Tutin slams him in the corner. You see Jokinen gave it back to Rutu, who wasn't really appreciative of that as he was all tangled up. He's got the bad shoulder, and you can see right there, he's really laboring. That's not the same Tuomo Rutu we saw early in the tournament. Sheridan brought down by Yaskalainen as Pitkinen brings it ahead for the Finns. Back to get it for Russia is Kaigerodov. Alexei Kaigerodov played it up there to his partner Konstantin Korneyev. He was tangled up, and now the Russians will try it again. Kaigerodov looking up there for Shishkinov. The pass was in his hands. UC Jokinen spins and flips it out. Shishkinov flips it back in. Two Finns are battling injuries, and their key players, Global Rutu, as Pierre mentioned, and Sean Bergenheim, number 10, who's out there now. Rutu got a rest thanks to the blowout win over Slovakia. He did not play in the third period, but Bergenheim was really struggling yesterday as well. Bergenheim's not a big player at 5'11", 198 pounds. I'm not even sure he's that tall or that heavy, but he is a human buzz bomb. He finishes every single check that he has an opportunity to finish, and he gets to the net in a hurry. That's the positive side. The downside is right now he's bad all kinds of little injuries, and right now early in this game, he does not have the same presence in terms of speed and creativity that we've seen earlier in the tournament. Andre Teratuk and a hulking presence out there for the Russians. Teratukin, 6'4", 215 pounds, plays for Moncton, as we mentioned, in the Quebec Major Junior League, and he stands out as a huge presence out there. Koltsov trying to step across the line. He spun down, and we will have a penalty coming up to Finland as dancing across the line, the Russian player was brought down, and the Russians will go to the power play. Erko Westland knows that his team is now receiving rather than quarterbacking. When you're receiving, you're going to take penalties right there. Penalty in the neutral zone. Suka takes the penalty, and he knows he probably did not compete as hard as he had to. There a little bit of lazy feet from Tommy Suko, and that's why Russia goes on the power play. The Russian power play hasn't been great in this tournament, though, Gord. They've been sixth overall in the tournament. Not great for all the offensive weaponry they have. Yeah, just three power play goals. The Russians didn't blow up Belarus like people thought they would. They only won that game 5-1. to one. Other teams are putting up double-digit numbers on Belarus. And here comes Tomo Rusu. Short-handed shot from well out. Medvedev to save. And Grebyshkov back to get it for the Russian. Rutu up for checking. Here comes Fedor Tutin. Tutin slides it down there. Leighton and leaves it back. Likes to play the puck. Pitkinen up there. Puts it in the corner. Nadiaho battling there. Gaskalin in there for it for the Finns. Grebyshkov's all over him. Trubachov looking for it as well. Good job by Yaskalainen to get it out and get off. Long lead feed. Two Russians standing side by side. The puck goes to Ovechkin. Leaves it up there for Pollution with a shot. Net deflects off a stick up over the glass and out of play. Everybody's talking about Alexander Ovechkin. We saw him early on being physical with Yanni Pitkinen, but it's not just his physical presence. It's his composure, his ability to create offense. Two hat tricks in this tournament so far. One against USA, one against the Swiss. He's number one in goal scored in this tournament. And Gord, he's only 17 years of age. Yeah, born on September 17th. And there's his agent, Don Meehan, who's keeping a close eye on him. And he's been shepherding him around. Ovechkin's mother played two Olympics in the basketball competition. So he comes by at the, his athletic ability, honestly. His dad's a hulking person as well. Oh, is he ever? He's got <laughs> huge hands. Grigorenko <laughs> plays it behind the goal, looking there for Teratukin. Back to the point it goes to Kornea. Koltsov winds up, takes the shot, and a big glove save by Kerry Leighton. 
can't overestimate the importance of this player to Finland if they have a chance this afternoon. Kerry Leighton is one of those guys that rises up at key times in games, and this is a very important game, obviously, for the Finns. Fighting through traffic right there, the screen present from Tara Tukin. Look at Leighton and fight right through that screen, snapping out the quick glove hand. Great save. 54 seconds left in this Russian power play. Koltsov walks in again, plays it off for Grigorenko. Back to Koltsov. Cross ice, he goes. There is Jogan. Ian Korneyev played give and go. Great puck movement by the Russians. They can move it all they want out there, and they're going to get to the net. Tara Tukin centers it. It's knocked away by the Finns, but not out. Korneyev leaving it there in front. It goes to Grigorenko. Now Perez Jogan with it. Stick handling through the Finns. Comes to the corner. Grigorenko. He takes a bump. Here comes Tara Tukin. Tara Tukin. To the side of the goal, Perijogan, Korneyev takes a shot, that's blocked. And that hit the fin right in the mouth. Tommy Mackey took that right in the face. And you see Jokinen finally clears it out in the final seconds of this Russian power play. And this is a costly penalty kill for the Finns. Yanni Pitkinen's going to the bench. He is shaking up. Hagerstedt battling along the boards, and the Finns cleared out once more. The penalty is over. The team's back to five on five. We're 8.45 into the hockey game. No score between Finland and Russia. The shots are five to one in favor of the Russians. Zherdev trying to play it up there to Kaigorodov, and the Russian coach shakes his head as Zherdev gives the puck away, and the subtext of the Russian team is that Zherdev is not getting along with his Mashtov, the Russian coach. Kaigorodov steps across the line. Drops it off for Zherdev, takes a shot off balance. That's blocked by Thomas Eminen, and Eminen will fire it down the ice to Sean Bergenheim. Bearing down, he takes a shot, and Medvedev shoots the pad out to make that stop. That's only the second shot on goal by the Finns so far in this game. Kaigorodov breaking in. Centers it there, one-timer blocked in front by Alis Vara. Good chance there for Enshikov. And the Finns come back the other way. Natanen up ahead for Bergenheim. Sean Bergenheim takes a shot. Medvedev to save. Rebound cleared away by the Russians. And the puck leaves the zone. Kaigorodov sends it up there for Zherdev. Artukin is up there as well. That pass was out of his reach. And Artukin banks it off the boards. It's by everyone. And Grebishkov has to retreat to get it. Pestinov up there for Fedor Tutin. Tutin backhands it down, but right to the finish defenseman Topi Yakala. Yakala blocked the shot against the Slovaks right off the instep. And it appeared to hurt him quite badly. He hasn't seen as much ice time as we thought he would in the first period. In the corner, Mari Aho to Tommy Maki. He turns it over, and here comes Artukin. Evgeny Artukin. One quick move, back to the stick. He goes back and shot scores! What a shot by Evgeny Artukin as he caps off a solo dash to make it one to nothing. And you see Tim in plays the puck rather than the man, but this is a spectacular play by Artukin. There's not much Leitinen can do on that play. Artukin gains the line. There's you see Tim in playing the puck rather than the man, and the laser beams backhand to the top of the net. That is just spectacular offensive hockey. Driving through the neutral zone, head up, go east, go west, use your feet, kick the puck to the stick, and backhand it over the glove hand of Kerry Leitinen. One of the real downfalls for Leighton in this tournament, a lot of people have said, if you shoot the puck high, you're going to beat him. Right there, he goes down a bit too low, and the excellent laser beam backhand goes and beats him. Artuka, the third round pick of the Tampa Bay Lightning. And that was a lightning strike from the slot. Back in it goes, as Pollution goes looking for him. Alexander Pollution backhands it in front. Leighton, seen enough of this, tries to play it out to the line, not out. Yes, and Nina Mackey brings it back the other way for Finland. Nina Mackey bearing into the slot. He's brought down. And Nina Mackey looks back as well as the Russians bear it down. 11 minutes into this opening period. And the goal scorer, Evgeny Artukin, with a beauty. Come on, Dad, focus. Widen your stance a little. Don't slouch, and don't screw up. This is the big leagues. What are you doing? Keep your eye on the ball. That was pathetic. Sorry. Yeah, well, sorry doesn't cut it. Here's 
Yeah, we said before the game watching the warm up that Evgeny Artukin really stood out as a huge guy with nice skills. At 6'4, 213 pounds, he's definitely big and he definitely has skills. He also plays in the Quebec Major Junior League for Moncton, so he's got a lot of experience playing on the smaller ice. And he's eating this experience up right now. And you have to wonder about Yanni Pitkinen. He has not been on the ice in his last three sequences for the Finns. And it all took place on that penalty oh. kill. There's the initial play right there where Pitkinen looks like he may have gotten hurt. And then he went to the bench. And they were spraying him with that freezing stuff, Gord, to try to get the pain reduced. Russians chip it out. Perijogin was looking for the puck. He saw two Russians dash ahead as soon as they tried to chip it out. Played up along the board by Lebushin. And Lebushin takes the return feed. Mikhail Lebushin takes a hard hit along the boards. He got up to Teratuka. Now a chance for Bergenheim. Backhand shot. Method up to save. Bergenheim centers it, but right to Teratuka. And here comes Perijogin the other way for Russia. Perijogin breaking around Yelizvara. Can't get a shot away as Yelizvara hung on for dear life. Teratuka. Lost the puck, UC Jokin and sends it ahead. The Russians really have the fins on their heels now. Grigorenko to Perijogin. Back behind the goal. UC Jokinen. Houses up to pick it up. Jokinen, five goals for the fins to lead them. Down to the Russian zone, it goes icing, waved off, and hard after it for the Finns was Thomas Mikkonen. Mikkonen for Henrik Jutten, and takes a shot. Nemedev the stop. Rebound in front, and that's cleared away by Alexei Kaigerodov. So a good chance for the Finns to answer back as the pass for Zherdev is too far, and they fire it back down. Nemedev up there for Zherdev. Nifty pass to leave it there for Grebyshkov. Grebyshkov across the line. Sends it across, and a great pass there, and not quite able to reach it with Sergei Anshikov. Yeah. And the Finns clear. Hey! Grebyshkov dumps it in, and this furious Russian forechecking continues. Anshikov takes his man out. And no choice there for the Finn. You've got Fagerstadt, just sends it down the ice. The Finns are running out of bodies on defense. Topiakla has hardly played at all in this game. Yanni Pitkinen is very seldom played after the first four minutes of this game, and they're running out of bodies. Artukin tried another quick move and put the puck into the finished bench. We're back to Halifax right after this. On January 17th, <laughs> one security guard. I'm a virtual one man from full SWAT team. I got skills. He's copping an attitude. What the problem is? What the problem is? What the problem is? What the problem is? Martin Lawrence. You're insane! And you're resisting arrest. <laughs> National security. Do you actually believe the trash that comes out of your mouth? Well, I'm never really sure. Well, I'm finished talking. When Peter's January 17th. ESSO rewards youngsters across Canada with most dedicated, most sportsmanlike, and most improved player medals and reinforces team commitment with certificates of achievement for each member. ESSO, premier sponsor of the CHA. Gary, you identified Yoni Pitkin as a key for Finland before this game, but he's in trouble early. He really is in trouble, and you can just see him laboring ever since he had that engagement along the far side boards. And, and if he's not able to pl play at 100% court, it's going to be very, very tough for the Finns to win this game. And you see them applying the magic freezing on the Finn bench, trying to do something to alleviate what's obviously the pain to that left leg. But Pitkin is such a horse for them, it's hard to imagine how they could do without him. And one of the adjustments that the Russians will make is they will attack the left side of the Finnish defense. They'll really go after him. We saw Grebyshev score by attacking the left side of the defense and watch for that to happen quite often. And here comes Pitkin back on the ice. We've got offsetting minor penalties called against the Russians and the Finns. Tumorutu goes off for Finland, and Pitkinen will come back on. And this will lead to some four-on-four four for the next couple of minutes, but you can see Pitkinen is clearly having a hard time. And I'll tell you what, he is one valiant hombre. He shows up every single day, whether it be for practice or for game score, as you all know, and he doesn't take any shifts off. Pitkinen tries to slide the puck ahead. That pass broken up by Ovechkin, who's out there four-on-four four for the Russians. Picking it now winds up and sends it down to the Russian zone. These fast boards come into play here. Lelushin gives a whack to Matty Aho. Aho takes the return pass, shoots it right on. Medvedev to save. Maxim Kondratyev plays it up there to Trubachev. Yuri Trubachev, second to Canada's Carlo Polyakovo in the tournament scoring race. Kaltava. Miko Kaltava, number five, should expect to get more ice time with Pickett and Laboring. Pickett and sends it in 
And Mazes makes his way slowly off the ice. Early in the tournament, Pitkin would have driven wide on that defenseman. Maxim Kondratiev. Kondratiev leads the rush. Plays it in the corner for Ovechkin. Back to the point it goes. Labushin with a shot and Kerry Letton with a glove hand will hang on. 14 minutes into this opening period. When you're playing against guys that have all kinds of turbocharged energy like Alexander Ovechkin, you want to make sure you control the pace of the game. There's the father of Alexander Ovechkin, Mikhail Ovechkin. Gordon and I had the privilege of meeting that gentleman the other night. What a nice guy. Yeah, he mentioned his, uh, his wife played in the Olympics. Looks like he wrestled bears at some point in his life. He is a big, big guy. He was a great soccer player, so this kid comes by his athletic ability through... Uh, all kinds of good grief. And his dad's sitting right down by the Russian bench. You don't see that very often. He's watching over everything his son does. He's real careful about where his son goes and oh. hangs out with him. Turned over and a quick chance there for Grigorenko as the, the Finns got sloppy with a puck. Here's Bergenheim. He gets hammered along the boards. Delayed offside indicated and now called against the Finns. So who will get the first spot in the semifinal? That's to be decided right now. But later on tonight we'll have the second semifinal, the one they've been waiting for here in Halifax, Canada, against the United States. And it all begins 7 o'clock Eastern time. And a penalty here called against the Russians. Dennis Grebyshkov goes off for boarding. And you saw Aho got wiped out there along the boards. Or rather, Bergenheim, sorry. And so the Finns will go to the power play with the third-ranked man advantage in this tournament. Two minutes for boarding. Time the penalty, 14 minutes and 12 seconds. Pitkinen playing it up ahead. It's a four on three power play because of the offsetting minor penalties called earlier. Bergenheim leaves it there for UC Jokin. They center it, but Fedor Tutin's there for the Russians. And Tutin just lifts it down the ice. Fedor Tutin, the second round pick of the New York Rangers, plays in St. Petersburg. He is really considered one of the better young prospects outside the National Hockey League. The Rangers were hoping he'd play in North America, but the Russians appealed to the International Ice Hockey Federation and said his transfer wasn't paid. He has to come back to Russia. Yakala for Pitkinen. Down by the low they go to Jokinen who gives the puck away. And quickly Kirill Koltsov sends it down the ice. Now a five on four power play for the next minute and ten seconds as Artukin comes back on the ice. The Finns desperately need a goal right now. They need something to energize them. The Russians are taking away all the energy the Finns had going into the game. Imanen is it behind the net. Medvedev not a great puck handler but does get the puck ahead as it's cleared out quickly. Gordon, I think you would agree the Finns right now do not have the same light, the same jump, and the Russians are beating with all the loose pucks. Thomas Imanen. The Finns, though, fortunate, only be down a goal. Rutu tries a quick move there, and Pollution gets it out. A foot race for it. Here comes Trubachov, and he gets there first. Yuri Trubachov tries to get around his men. Timonen, and Trubachov falls behind the goal. You'll see Timonen had to hang on for dear life there. But there's another trend to watch for as the game goes along. They don't have the same presence on the left side of their defense. The Russians are attacking that left side all the time. And yes, and Inamaki makes an extra move at the blue line, and offside is the call. Well, Tom Morutu is a first-round pick of the Chicago Blackhawks, and the Hawks desperately want to get this guy into their lineup. He's a real balanced player, not the most pure offensive presence, but he's a great two-way player. He's got two brothers that are also very good players. One of them, Yarko, plays for the Vancouver Canucks, who had a 3-2 win against Montreal last night. And the other one, Miko, was drafted by the Ottawa Senators. We feel badly for the Finns. They lost Miku Koivu before the tournament. Rutu hurt here with a bad shoulder. And now Yoni Pitkinen is limping as well. Their three best players, aside from Kerry Leitonen. Yaskalani couldn't get there, and the Russians will clear it down. That will kill the rest of this penalty as Grebyshkov steps back on the ice for Russia. Tommy Suka comes back for Finland with a puck. Quickly up to UC Jokinen. Jokinen flips it in. Henrik Juntinen was bumped off the puck. Medvedev leaves it there behind the goal for Petr Jogan. And Petr Jogan wraps it around the glass, but not out. Here it comes now as Kaigarodov leads the rush for Russia. Kaigarodov plays it there for Petr Jogan. In front, takes the shot, and Lettman holds his ground as Petr Jogan was bearing down on him. Back it goes in front. Kirill Koltsov had the puck bounce away from him. Back it goes to Grebyshkov. That shot's blocked. Koltsov looking for it again. Grigorenko. Grigorenko still with it. Spins. Look at Grigorenko dance through the fins. Plays it off there for Paris Jogan. Back in front he goes. Can't get a shot away and finally does. Lettinen stuffs the leg out and another penalty coming up this time for the Russians, I believe, is Paris Jogan. Got a stick on the fin and we're back after this. Hey guys, look what the neighbors threw out. Beer, 
beer, beer, beer, bubble of beer, 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 oh, when we get together, just me and all the lads, everyone remembers all the fun we've had, cause every time we gather, there's plenty of good cheer, imagine finding someone's organ, <laughs> The Molson Canadian Bubba, now dressed in team jerseys and perfect for watching the game. Well, the bad news for the Finns is didn't do much of their first power play, Pierre, but they get a second one as Perijogan goes off. And he gets a hook on Ale or Mikko Kaltev right there in the offensive zone. Here come the Russians driving to the net. Plays created. Keep the flow going of the play, and you'll see what happens. There's Kaltev going down right there. There's the penalty. So the referee, Ulf Radbier, sends Finland back to a second power play. 0 for 1 without a shot on their first opportunity. And the Finns are going to have to cash on these chances. And the strength of their team during the regulation part of this tournament was they were second on power play. You see Jokinen leaves it there for Henrik Juntin at number 17. And Jokinen gets hammered down by Juntin. Juntin comes up with it. Pitkin is back on the point. Juntin in front. That shot deflected just wide. Pitkin. Down low for Tuomo Rutu to UC Jokinen. Jokinen, as all day, Pitkinen has the puck hop over his stick but keeps it in. In front he goes, Yakla with a shot, that's off a skate up over the glass and out of play. Solid defensive sequence for Fedor Tutin, the draft pick of the New York Rangers, blocks a shot right there. He also knows how to get physical. Fedor Tutin identifies, reacts very quickly and says, here comes a little punishment for you. You see Jokinen, and he puts him right down on the seat of his pants. Mentioned that Fedor Tutin played last season for the Guelph Storm of the Ontario Hockey League. They figured he'd make the Rangers, didn't pay the transfer fee that's required. And as a result, when he was not in the Ranger lineup, he couldn't go back to play junior. And the Russians appealed the Rangers sending him to Hartford of the American League and said, no, no, no. He's not playing junior. He's coming back here. Ninamaki, a first-round pick of the Edmonton Oilers. Leaves it behind the goal. Tomo Rutu there for the Finns. Under a minute to go in this finished power play. Still looking for a good scoring chance. Pitkinen. Johnny Pitkinen walks in through his screen. Can't get a shot away as he was hooked from behind. They center it. Bergenheim couldn't get a shot away. Yakula takes a shot. And a great blocker save there by Medvedev. Barnea battling with Rutu. Rutu. To Bergenheim. Niedemacki scores! There's the goal they were looking for. It's 1-1. One, one. And that's a great job by Niedemacki getting the puck to the front of the net. And a good job by Sean Bergenheim winning races. That's what you want to do. Win battles down low. There's the strength of Pumorutu. Good job by Bergenheim. There's the pest influence of Bergenheim. Feed it right out front. Ninamaki, quick release, finishes the playoff. But Bergenheim makes this thing happen by setting a little pick. That opens up some room for Rutu. Puck comes out front. Ninama finishes it off. Ninamaki finishes it off. That's a great play. And that's a huge goal for the Finns to allow them to go back and play their style of game. It comes with a minute and a half left in the period. And Yessa Ninamaki gets his first goal of the tournament. And uh, what a good time to get it. Now here's another turnover. Let this Salo. Leaves it there for Tiemann with a shot. That went well wide. Let this Salo on his horse. Gets the puck back, but it's chipped by Fagerstedt and back down to the finish zone. Icing waved off as you see Tiemann's back to get it. Another Philadelphia pick, a fifth round pick back in 2001. His long lead pass too far for everyone, and icing is the call. Nina Mackey does a great job, but this is what I want you to watch. Bergenheim right here. That just creates a little bit of separation and time for Rutu, and now Nina Mackey can come across the ice, post up in the mid-slot area, and finish the playoff. That's just an outstanding job by Bergenheim. Edmonton Oilers GM Kevin Lowe told me that when they took Nina Mackey, he said, I play like Peter Forsberg. There's a shot from well up that's blocked in front, and a lot of people criticize the Oilers for that pick of Nina Mackey, who really came from off the radar, but... Uh, Nidamaki plays in the Finnish Elite League. One of his wingers, 32 years old. The other one's 35. Here he is, 19 years old. Well, you can see there was some savvy right there, movement away from the puck, but you can't stress enough the little play made by Bergenheim, which gave Rutu the time and space to make the play down low. Shots are 10 to 7 in favor of the Russians, but our score is even at 1. Final minute of the opening period. The Russians have had the edge in play, but a finished power play goal has them back in it. Gabrishkov gets up there to Shishkinov. 
Matty Ajo back for the Finns. Dinamaki from Bergenheim and Rutu at 1828 is the scoring play as the Finns once again ice the puck. And we mentioned Tuomo Rutu. Look at the Finnish first rounders. They've got five. The Russians only have two. They've done a great job with their developmental programs. And it could be goaltending like Kerry Leighton. It could be defensemen like Yanni Pitkinen. Or it could be forwards like Tuomo Rutu, Yesen Dinamaki, or Sean Bergenheim. Whatever it is, they really do a great job in cultivating and breeding talent in Finland right now. And they deserve a ton of credit for the way their programs have evolved. And the Finns were determined to have made a late line change. So Tommy Mackey has to come back on with Matti Aho. A little gamesmanship by Urka Vestman and their coach trying to slow the pace of the game down. Kirill Koltsov winds up, walks in, has a chance, takes the shot, hit the goal post. What a shot by Koltsov. That was a rocket. One of the things the Russians are doing very well, they know the Finns like to block a lot of shots. They're faking the initial shot, the Finnish player's going down, then the Russians are driving right around them and creating good shots off movement to the inside part of the ice. Yuri Trubachov, number 15. That big line out there with Pollution and Ovechkin. Here is Alexander Ovechkin. He's bumped up along the board. So strong on his skate, so gets it to Trubachov. He's watched by Jokinen. Played up along the boards and in the final seconds of the opening period. Time winds down and the Finns, you'd have to say, hang on as they get a late one on Andre Medvedev and it's 1-1 after 20 minutes of play. Not the best period of hockey for the Finns, but as Gord said, they hang on and a big reason why they hang on is Kerry Leighton does an excellent job in goal and they get their effective power play to score. It's number two in the tournament and that was a huge power play goal for them late at the end of the first period. Coming up, our first intermission when Scotty Bowman will be Gino Retta's guest. That's coming up in a few moments here on TSN. are busier than ever across Canada because Ring In and Win is coming to a close soon but there's still time to join the thousands who've already won from a guaranteed $500 off and more you could even win your vehicle plus get 0% purchase financing Hurry, GM Ring In and Win ends January 13th Hey guys, look what the neighbors threw out Multi-Canadian Bubba, now dressed in team jerseys and perfect for watching the game. Census, JVC. Sometimes I think of turning off all the lights, letting her come and take me. It can't be explained. He feels something is after him. It can't be denied. Once you've seen her, she doesn't stop. But it's happening. She won't come in the light. Oh. You're not cool. Darkness falls. Don't let them put him in the dark. Theaters January 24th. I thought about it when we brought the baby home. Life insurance. I wanted to deal with someone who sees the important things the way I do. I'm a person, not just a policy number. At RBC Insurance, it's not about us, it's about you. RBC Insurance. We'll be there with the bright solutions you need to make insurance fit your world.
really hard to put into words. Uh, that first gold medal was unbelievable. Just getting an opportunity to go there with some of those great players and uh, being such a battle in such a close tournament. You know, them almost tying it the last game, we would have lost and got the silver. And uh, just guys pulling together and just, uh, you know, hearing that anthem, you know, the flag raised at the end of the game, it was, uh, you know, a great moment. Canada finished a forgettable fourth in 1989, but those of us fortunate enough to be in Anchorage, Alaska, will never forget the Soviet Union team of that year. A line of Sergei Fedorov between Alexander McGillney and a 17-year-old Pavel Bure led the Soviets to the championship. But it was their only loss of the tournament, a 5-3 decision to Czechoslovakia, that was most unforgettable. It was as fast and nasty and as exciting a game as you could possibly imagine. And when it was over, I always remember Alexander McGillney skating off the ice and angrily firing his stick straight up into the rafters of the arena. It was great drama and great hockey. In 1990 in Helsinki, the World Junior buzz was provided by the Czechoslovakian line of Robert Reichel between Bobby Holy and some kid with a mullet. Yeah, Yarmer Yager. But as dominant as that trio was, it was the dramatic circumstance of Canada's gold medal victory that stands out for me. A loss to Sweden and a tie with Finland appeared to doom coach Guy Chiron's team. The Soviets needed only to beat a substandard Swedish team on the final day to clinch gold. With only minutes left in the Canada-Czechoslovakian game for silver or bronze, the word came down that Sweden had tied the Russians at the buzzer at another venue. Canada was leading Czechoslovakia 2-1 with only minutes to go. I have to tell you, you had to be there, and I was right beside the Canadian team bench to see the energy level explode when the players found out that this was now a gold medal game. In 1991 in Saskatoon, everyone remembers John Slaney's game-winning goal against the Russians, and that was great. But it never would have been if not for a bizarre and wonderful game between Finland and the Soviet Union in Regina's Agridome a couple of days earlier. The Soviets, once again led by Pavel Bure, needed only a win against an average Finnish team to clinch gold. The Finns jumped out to a big lead early on, but it evaporated in the third period when Bure scored on three remarkable solo dashes. The Soviets were leading 5-4 to four and seemingly had the gold secured when a harmless bad angle shot bounced into the Soviet net in the final minute. That bizarre tie set up the gold medal game between Canada and the Soviets, and we all know what happened after that. No player dominated a World Junior Tournament like Peter Forsberg did on home ice in Javla, Sweden in 1993. Playing on a line with Marcus Naslund and Nicholas Sundstrom, Forsberg had a record 31 points in seven games. He was quite simply too good for everyone that year. Everyone except Team Canada netminder Manny Legacy, who stood on his head in a 50-shot barrage and upset 5-4 victory for Canada over the Swedes that led to a mammoth upset and surprise gold medal for Coach Perry Pern's team. With five straight gold medals for Canada in the 1990s, it's odd that my most stirring patriotic moment would come during a gold medal loss. But that's a credit to the fans in Winnipeg at the 1999 event. When Team Canada took to the ice for the gold medal game against Russia, the noise, the fervor, the flag waving was like nothing I'd ever experienced. And that included the Canada Cups, the World Cup, and the Olympics. Roberto Luongo was brilliant in the overtime loss to a much better Russian team, but the atmosphere, excitement, and patriotism for a World Junior game has never been better than it was that night. And I don't think I'll ever forget being at ice level in Winnipeg in the old arena. A reminder for exclusive player profiles, behind-the-scenes photos, and updates on all 10 teams, including Team Canada, be sure to check out CanadianHockey.ca email. Email your favorite Team Canada player and parents. Check out the new Relax, It's Just a Game PSAs. That's CanadianHockey.ca, the official website of the 2003 World Junior Hockey Championship. Welcome back to the newsroom. Hope you're enjoying the game. We'll get you back to Halifax in just a second. The next edition of Sports Center comes your way at 6.30 Eastern time. Here are some of the stories we are working on for you. Of course, we'll have wall-to-wall -wall coverage from the World Juniors in Halifax, including a preview of tonight's second semifinal between Canada and the United States. Also, show you some memorable moments between these two countries. 
in international hockey. Hey, police board Michael Renberg says his left hand became so infected this week the doctors considered amputating it before it became fatal. He's out indefinitely. The remainder of the lease are in New Jersey to begin a home and home set with the devil. We'll also set the stage for tonight's NBA encounter between the Raptors and Cavaliers. Antonio Davis will be back for that one. Also coming up in Sports Center, a preview of the Fiesta Bowl, Miami and Ohio State. More coming up from Halifax after this. America's top critics are united in their praise for Gangs of New York. Ebert and Roper give it two thumbs up. Premier Magazine declares four stars. Rolling Stone Magazine raves. It's the best picture of the year. And now Gangs of New York has been nominated for five Golden Globe Awards, including Best Actor, Best Supporting Actress, Best Director, and Best Picture of the Year. Gangs of New York, now playing in theaters everywhere. Hey guys, look what the neighbors threw out. Beer, 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 bubble of beer, 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 oh, when we get together, just me and all the lads, everyone remembers all the fun we've had, cause every time we gather, there's plenty of good cheer, imagine finding someone's organ, oh. The multi Canadian Bubba, now dressed in team jerseys and perfect for watching the game. I am what hockey has been waiting for. Every shot is a shot at the big time. One shot closer to becoming one of the greatest players and greatest names of the most incredible game. Time now for the first period summary, and Russia looked good to start. 10-22 in, Evgeny Artukin, beautiful backhand roof job to give Russia a 1-0 lead, but then Yesa Ninamaki on the power play. With about a minute and a half left to go in the period, the equalizer of Finland were all tied at one after 20 minutes of play. And we're now joined in our broadcast location by nine-time Stanley Cup champion Scotty Bowman, who's now, I guess, I want to say semi-retired because you're still kind of working, but are you experiencing a little withdrawal? Not really, Gino. I uh, I enjoy watching TSN, watching your buddies, uh, Gord and uh, Pierre, you know, and have fun watching that. But, no, seriously, I, I Kenny Holland's been very gracious to me, the fact that he lets me go to as many games as I want to go to. This has been an exciting tournament because of the fact the best players in the world under 20 are playing against each other. And anytime you get the best players playing against each other, especially with Canada not having won a gold medal for a few years, there's a tremendous excitement here in Halifax. And one of those great young talents, Igor Gregorenko, is property of the Detroit Red Wings. Well, everybody's looking at him because, uh, you know, with the Russian players, their league is strong. And if he can come in and get a spot on our team in Detroit, I'm sure he'll be looking forward to doing that. But if he can't, of course, he'd, he'd probably stay over there. But we've had good success with, with, with all of our Russian players. And he looks like a big, strong winger uh, that's got a lot of speed. And, uh, you know, the Russian players are so good in their puck skills. that uh, And they're playing on the smaller rink, which is unusual for this tournament. But that doesn't seem to bother any of these European players. One of the guys who's drawing a lot of attention, obviously, hasn't scored yet today, Alexander Ovenchkin. Two hat tricks already in this tournament. Well, a young player and not in the draft till misses the draft by a couple of days. So everybody knows what he's like, and I'm sure they'll be watching him so closely. But there's so many other players to look at that you, you, you can't watch them all. So you don't concentrate as much on somebody that wouldn't be in the draft from for next year or a player that I think a lot of teams have own players that are on lists. And they're looking at those players because there's a lot of decisions to make to sign them, bring them over to North America. But some of them are even playing in the Canadian Junior Leagues now. Scotty, thanks a lot for taking the time to join us. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of the tournament in your semi-retirement. Thank you, Gino. Scotty Bowman, our guest here in the intermission. 1-1 one, one after 1 between Finland and Russia. Hi, I'm Jordan Tutu. Join Team Canada on January 3rd for semi-final action on TSN, Canada's sports leader. We should change before we pick up the girls. Okay. Chevy Avalanche.
It changes from a pickup to an SUV. What are you doing? Avalanche, like a rock. Want to be the talk of the office without embarrassing yourself at the company party? Just show up to work with McDonald's new chicken flatbread. A warm flatbread wrapped around grilled seasoned chicken breast, sautéed onions, and melted processed cheese. McDonald's new chicken flatbread. People will be lining up outside your cubicle for a look. has been waiting for. Every shot is a shot at the big time. One shot closer to becoming one of the greatest players and greatest names of the most incredible game in the world. What's your dream? Welcome back to Halifax. Kerry Layton has done almost everything right for Finland. Almost, except walk on the ice pier. Gord, I hate it when inanimate objects get in your way and Whoa. bring it down. Little door takes down Kerry Layton, but he says, I'm a competitor. I hate the door. Inanimate object, take that. It's like it was that kid's fault or something. <laughs> Yanni Pitkinen got a good chuckle out of that. We talked about this guy being a valiant warrior, and Yanni Pitkinen probably shouldn't be playing in this game right now, but he's going to be starting a lot, a lot of minutes. He looked like he got better after they put that little free spray on him. And who knows what they did to him between periods. <laughs> exactly. Grebyshkov rather plays it up along the boards. Fedor Tutin steps up, sides up the check from Tuomo Rutu. Pollution leaves it off there. Krubica trying to drop it off. Tutin with a shot right on. Kerry Leighton doesn't stumble there. Makes a quick stop 20 seconds into this period. Johnny Pitkinen played over half the first period for the Finns. Remember last year, Gordy played 49 games in the Finnish Elite League. Not an easy thing to do as a 17-year-old. One of the things that the Philadelphia Flyers like about him so much, they made him the fourth pick overall in the last draft, is the fact that he's in such good shape and he's so strong. Back to the point it goes. Konstantin Korneyev goes across the ice. Kirill Koltsov with a shot. Almost half a pass. It wasn't deflected. Perry Jogan walks out front. Pitkin has got him all tied up. And the Finns are able to clear it out. You saw the strength of Pitkin in there. Well, that's exactly why he's going to be such a big stopper in the National Hockey League. Once he engages on you and takes away your hands and your feet, there's nowhere for you to go. Konstantin Korneyev, a late-round pick of the Montreal Canadiens, turned the puck over. Here comes Tommy Mackey. Up ahead he goes for Nathanen, and Mackey gets there first. Centers it, but Korneyev came back and played it out of the zone for the Russians. Delayed offside into the game against Finland, now waved off. Perijogin flips it out for the Russians. One of the things the Finns really have to be careful of here as this period goes along, the Russians like to sneak people in on line changes. Teaming him with a shot, that deflects wide. Sean Bergenheim, sharp angle shot, that was stopped in front. Kagarodov skated away with Bergenheim's stick. And plays it up ahead, but you see Jokinen was there for Finland. Jokinen, long lead feed that was out of the reach of Leti Salo for Finland. And Medvedev out of his goal. Leti Salo. Trying to play it up along the boards. Yalasvara is there for Finland, and Yanni Yalasvara plays it back down. That stick is still getting in the way at the side of the Russian goal. Leti Salo almost intercepted that, that pass. Kaigarodov brings it ahead for Russia. Alexei Kaigarodov 
centers it there. And look out, that was a rocket from Kondratiev. Maxim Kondratiev leaned into that. Scared the living daylights out of Bob McKenzie, who's standing behind the finish goal. The Finns have changed their approach in terms of defensive presence. They're playing a left-wing lock right now. Earlier in the game, they were playing a 1-3-1. They're playing that left-wing lock to discourage the Russians from gaining the left-hand side of the ice against the Finns. Maxim Kondratiev. Long bounce pass looking there for Sergei Anchikov. But that pass is too far, and icing is the call. The Russians really want to try to attack the left-hand side of the Finnish defense. So here's what the Finns are doing. You'll see them coming out of their own zone. They always have a forward locking in this lane right here. That's a great job by Ninamaki. That way they discourage the Russians from gaining the zone. Look how they funnel everything to the middle. That means that player runs out of room. That's an excellent job by the Finns in defense. And great coaching by Erika Westerlund. Oh, Scotty be so proud of Oh, you. the left wing lock. Bring it on, baby. <laughs> Scotty's bread and butter in Detroit for nine years. Back to the point it goes. Kaltova with a shot. That deflected just wide, and Medvedev seemed to have trouble tracking that. Shishkinov able to chip it out for the Russians, and it's played right back down to Denis Grebyshkov. And Grebyshkov plays a lot for this Russian team. Once upon a time, the Russians simply rolled their lines, their defense, but now you'll see Grebyshkov and others double, even triple shifted. Shishkinov. Back behind the goal, the Russian goal scorer, Artukin. That's Jenny Artukin. Leaves it there. Shishkinov spins away, falls. And Finn Artukin with a sharp angle shot that almost deflected into the finished goal. Finns are more ready to compete in battle. They're not nearly as intimidated by the Russians. That late power play goal gave them the surge of energy that they needed. Grebyshkov, though, is one of those guys that you really want to identify. The Los Angeles Kings did, did that two years ago, taking him 18th overall. He only has one minus in this tournament so far, Gord. He's a top plus minus player in the tournament at plus eight. But the thing about him is he's so strong in the puck, and he really knows how to play well defensively. And it's so hard to get a read now with the team split into two pools. And that group A was substantially weaker with the likes of Belarus and Slovakia. Hey, the Swiss gave them their best game, 7-5. That's right. And, and Medvedev did not look great in that game. Here's a puck turned over to Pollution. And he fights one behind the goal. Trubachov there as well. Back to the point it goes. Korneyev with a pass. It's off a leg. And here comes Ovechkin. Centers it there just out of the reach of Trubachov. Backhand shot well wide. Russians on their horse now, but Tiemann breaks up that pass for the Finns. Long lead feed for Tuomo Rutu. The pass was in his skates, and it was on target. He had a breakaway. And back come the Russians the other way. Here comes Pollution. Pollution with a shot. That's off a leg. Rebound. Koltsov stepped up, intercepts that pass, and now finally it's cleared out. Here comes Pollution. Flipping it down to the finish zone. Gary Leighton. Up along the boards it goes, and he... Plays it there to Thomas Imanen for UC Jokinen. Here comes Sean Bergenheim. He's up there with Matty Natanen. Natanen in behind the goal. Trying to come up with a puck, but Igor Grigorenko strips it from him. And here comes Grigorenko. His pass broken up for the moment. Brought up ahead. The pass goes off a leg as Lebushin couldn't get it ahead. Sean Bergenheim up ahead for the Finns. Long cross ice speed for UC Jokinen. Bearing in, takes a shot. He's brought down, no penalty call in the play, and UC Jokinen exasperated at that. Ah, that was a penalty. Kagarodov played it right on. Good pace here in the second period. Russia and Finland are tied at one. And that was the story of last year's semifinal meeting as Kerry Leighton held them in until the Russians finally scored early in overtime to advance to the gold medal game. Yoni Pitkin in across the line. Pitkin and bearing in, takes a high stick, and that will draw a penalty. As Andre Teratukin got the high stick on Yoni Pitkinen, and Finland will go back to the power play. Lighting smell? Smell this. Speed stick lightning. An intense scent that smells good. Nice. Soft 24 hour protection. A scent inspired by the power of nature. I manage. Head into Sportcheck for savings this holiday season. Great gift ideas and savings for the entire family. Gifts for your feet, fun, fashion, and the ultimate sports fan. Whatever you need, it's all right here in Sportcheck. Sportcheck, the best, the best value. Bauer Nike Hockey supports the development programs of the Canadian Hockey Association for players, coaches, and officials, helping all hockey participants in Canada realize their dreams. Bauer Nike Hockey, premier sponsor of the CHA. 
knocking someone's helmet off with your stick, the very definition of high sticking, Pierre. It certainly is. We're seeing something out of Yanni Pitkinen that we didn't see early on in the game, his ability to skate with a puck and drive wide. Tara Tukin knocks his block off, and that's why he's in the penalty box. Finland one for two on the power play so far. Scored on their only shot with a man advantage. And quickly, that's fired down the ice. Yes, it did a Mackey. Had the equalizer for Finland in the opening period. You cannot overstate the importance of winning the initial draw on the power play, whether you're the penalty killing team or the power play team. Yoni Pitkinen flips it in the corner. Rutu looking for it. Jukin up along the boards. Kept it by UC Jokinen. And that clearing attempt went off a leg and finally does leave the zone as Fedor Tukin steps up and backhands it down to the finish zone. Pitkinen and Yakula back on the points. Mikinen up front along with Tuomo Rutu and UC Jokinen. And Pickenen's pass went right into the midsection of Zherdev for the Russians, who fires it back down the ice. You're being generous. That wasn't a pass. That was an abysmal shoot-in by Yanni Pitkinen. He's much better than that. Rutu up there for Tommy Mackey. Pass out of his reach. And that play broken up as it's shipped in by Pollution. Alexander Pollution, a returning player from last year's gold medal team. will head back on this penalty kill. And the Finns having trouble getting organized here. Inamaki, the goal scorer, calling for the puck, but that pass broken up at the Russian blue line as it goes up over the glass and out of play. That whole sequence went array for the Finns because they didn't win the initial draw, and now the Russians have killed off over a minute and 10 seconds. Jesse Inamaki is an important player. He's got to bear down more on faceoffs. He's got to start winning. Didn't have a great first period. They Ooh. win the faceoff. Oh, Pollution's going to get it for high sticking Bergenheim. Pollution right off the faceoff stuck Sean Bergenheim, and now a chance for a two man advantage for the Finns. Get it deep and then give it up is what you want to do. And Kornea finally touches it. 35 seconds to go in the first penalty. And Finland will have a face-off in the Russian zone and a two-man advantage. Upper right of your screen, you're going to see the high stick pollution engaging with Bergenheim. Oh. oh, man, good thing he had a visor, too, or that could have been a very desperate situation for Sean Bergenheim. Bergenheim takes lots of little things for his team, whether it be high sticks or getting good little body contact plays down low. We saw him create separation for Rutu in the first period, so Bergenheim could put the puck out into the slot for Ninamaki, who scored a play. So lots of little things matter when Sean Bergenheim's on the ice. And the Russians try to make a late change to kill some time. Better be careful, the puck will be on the ice. And I don't like this setup. Never leave the board side winger exposed. It's a real easy face-off win for Jokin, and all he's got to do is pat the puck over to the boards to Juntinen. And Rutu now steps in for that draw. There it is. It. That's all you got to do. Picking it back to Evenen. Yoni Pitkin. Thomas Evenen teams it up with a shot that went just wide. Rebound. Jokinen takes a whack at it. Nebedev never saw that first shot. Now they battle for it. Krebishkov comes up with it to the line. Not out. Picking it to Evenen. Down low he goes. He had Yuntinen wide open. It's broken up. And here comes Dennis Grebishkov. Ten seconds go on the first penalty. Grebishkov waits, flips it in, and heads off. Oh, Henrik Jutten, if that pass had gotten through, that was a tap-in for a goal. I don't play if on a five-on-three, though. Here's Rutu across the line. Tombo Rutu, first penalty has expired. Rutu takes a whack there. Kirill Koltsov giving it to him. Rutu goes cross ice to Pitkinen. Pitkinen in front, and a great stop there by Medvedev. As getting a stick on it was UC Jokinen, but Andre Medvedev stands his ground with a minute 11 to go on this power play. The strength of UC Jokinen is his ability to move away from the play. Last night he had two goals in the win versus Slovakia. Look at how he moves into the danger area right there to chip that puck onto Medvedev. Good heads up play by Pitkinen. There's Jokinen. One time you think you got him, then he disappears, then he comes right back. He's a real gifted offensive player because he moves without the puck. And a lost face off for the Finns, but they're able to keep it in this time for the moment. Now the puck comes out. Kirill Koltsov just flips it down to the finish zone. One minute to go in this Finland power play. Grigorenko sent sprawling as Ninamaki calls for the puck and gets it. Ninamaki trying to center it there for Bergenheim. The pass was behind him and it's flipped back out. Jaskalainen back for Finland. Teemu Jaskalainen. Look out, loses the puck there for the moment and almost gave it up to Igor Grigorenko, which would be a very bad idea. And here's Grigorenko with it. Empty pass there. Kaigarona with a shot and Leighton has to make a good stop. Good shorthanded chance for the Russians. Ninamaki across the line. Korneyev's all over him and Ninamaki falls. Tommy Mackey looking for the loose puck. Swedish ref urging them to play on, and they do. Bergenheim. John Bergenheim. 
Loses it to Kaigarodov, and he bounces it off the boards just out of the reach of Nikolai Zherdev. Layton and up along the boards, final seconds of this finished power play. Pollution set to step back on the ice. Zabushin hangs it off there, gives it up to Mikinen. And Thomas Mikinen flips it back down to the Russian zone. Eight and a half minutes gone here in the second period. Russia and Finland in a very close game, 1-1. Both teams playing it very close to the vest. Zherdev, good feed to Pollution. And that shot from well out, gloved by Kerry Lakenden. TSN's live coverage of the 2003 World Junior Hockey Championship returns after this. What's up, Team Canada's next. Stay tuned following this game for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Fisherman's Friend. Ralph, <clears throat> Ralph, get in here. Irritated throat. Oh, apple cinnamon. Fisherman's Friend, no, an apple cinnamon. <sighs> Raphael Ishmatov's team has outshot Finland 14 to 8, but we are tied at one as we reach the midway point of the hockey game. If they're tied for regulation time, a 10-minute overtime, and then, if necessary, a shootout. And one of the greatest moments in Finnish junior history came in 1998 on home ice. Gold medal. Overtime win in the gold medal game over the Russians. Artukin, Russian goal scorer, flips it down. Puts a stick on his man, Tiemann, and who plays it up along the boards. Grebyshkov centers it there. Dinamaki intercepted that pass, almost gave it right back, and the puck goes loose in front, and a great chance there for Pestinov. But Kelly Leighton holds his ground as all over him was Dmitry Pestinov. One constructive criticism for the Finns. They've got to get stronger on the puck in their own zone. They're far too loose. There's an example being loose on the puck. That's going to create an offensive opportunity for the Russians. And there's Kerry Leighton and moving from his right to his left. You see that big body presence of the goaltender Leighton. And that's one of the strengths of his game, moving from side to side. Goes to the second shutout of this World Junior Hockey Championship yesterday against Slovakia. Up along the boards it goes, let the Salo plays it down, and the Slovaks in the pregame ceremony you always exchange gifts in international hockey, the Slovaks forgot the gift. Kids got mad and scored three quick ones on them. They forgot to show up, too. <laughs> yeah, Skalainen tried to chip that ahead. Ovechkin brings the puck across the line, but offside is the call. And this is just the appetizer this afternoon. Tonight, the game we're waiting for, the United States against Canada. Both teams are red hot going into the semifinal meeting. It all comes your way at 7 o'clock Eastern time for Pacific. Canada and the U.S. That's all you have to say. Kaltova plays that up ahead just out of the reach of Tony Suka. And Suka tried to drop that off, but it was out of the reach of Letisalo. Picking it, tries to glove that ahead. And Yoni Pickett retreats to get it for Finland. Pickett it. Chris pass up there, but let the Salo strip to the puck. And a centering pass for Pollution just out of his reach. Dinamaki, he's all tied up. Leaves it there for Pickett it. Yoni Pickett it across the line. He's sandwiched between two Russians. Pollution got him. So did Yuri Trubachev. And that long pass for Trubachev knocked out of midair. But here comes Ovechkin with a shot. That's just wide of the goal. And a rocket from Ovechkin. The two times that the Russians have had great scoring chances here in the second period, both of them have been high and wide, so they're definitely shooting high at Kerry Lakeman. Tony Pickett is forced to retreat by Perejogan, who brings him down. Stepping up is Teratukin. Perejogan and Teratukin forechecking for the Russians, and Yusi Jokinen finally flips it up. Foot race, Sean Bergenheim gets there, but Maxim Kondratyev saved the day for the Russians. Past the midway point of the second period, still 1-1. Igor Grigorenko walking around Yusi Jokinen. Grigorenko lost it now to Jokinen. Chance for a two-on-one. And Nathanen brought down. Bergenheim looking for it. Nathanen battling for the puck along the wall. Bergenheim gets there, takes a bump. Now you see Jokinen with it. Centers it there. No one there for the Finns. And the puck is cleared out. Thomas Emanen had to be careful there with Perejogan standing on him. Perejogan fell, and Timonen plays it up ahead. Matty Nathanen. 
Puck stripped away from him. And here comes Parrish Ogun the other way. Tried that nifty move the second time. A junior move, you might say. And the Finns clear it down. The Finns are frustrating the Russians right now because they're not giving them chances off the rush. They always make sure they have a third player back insulating their defenseman. Fedor Tutin steps up. Rolling puck. Carry late and careful with that. Dallas Vara banks it off the boards there for Tuomo Rutu. Grigorenko. Long lead pass there. That's past everyone, and icing is the call. Eight minutes, 13 seconds to go in the second period. Still tied at one. What if General Motors hadn't introduced the airbag? Or safety glass in all windows? What if GM hadn't invented the side door beam? Or the modern crash test dummy? What if GM hadn't invented today's concrete highway divider? Would you still feel safe getting into a car? As the world's largest automobile maker, we're not only committed to improving our cars, we're committed to improving all cars. RBC Financial Group has developed the Toonie Toss fundraising program. Toss a Toonie from the stands, one nearest the target wins great prizes. Proceeds go directly to your community hockey program. RBC Financial Group, premier sponsor of the CHA. The Finns have been doing a great job in congesting the neutral zone, making sure they have enough blue bodies back. And what you want to make sure is that these defensemen are insulated. There's the insulation. Congest the neutral zone. Congest, congest. And then you just force a harmless shoot-in. Leighton and Elite goes up all night long. And this game following very much the same pattern as last year as Anchikov breaks in for the Russians and gets erased by Yanni Yalasvara. Wow. And now Tommy Mackey with the steal, centers it there. Medvedev wanted to play it, but Fedor Tutin banks it off the glass, not out. Here's a chance by Yakula, and that shot knocked away by Medvedev. Anchikov, long lead feed for Zherdev. Gets it there to Kagarodov, and his shot is blocked. Zherdev, walking to the front, stripped of the puck, leaving it there for Anchikov. He's stripped by Matty Aho, and Matty Aho comes away for Finland. Kagarodov. Being careful there. The Finns played and won last night. The Russians' last game was earlier in the week. A 7-5 win against Switzerland, the game in which they actually trailed for a time. That puck takes a strange bounce off the glass. Pestinov, one-timer, that's just wide by Shishkinov. Pestinov, he's brought down on a penalty coming up to Finland. Juha Fagerstad is going off. He can't believe it. And the crowd doesn't like it either. But with 7-10 to go in the second period, Russia is going to the power play. It's a little bit soft right here on this call. Not sure I agree with this one, but you get engaged down low. There's a little bit of a slash, but then it's just... Uh, yeah, yeah, that just drives you nuts. Stand up. I should have gotten for the slash. <laughs> Russia 0 for 1 on the power play with one shot on goal, and the faceoff will be in the finish zone. It's amazing the Russians haven't been better on the power play. They haven't scored yet in this game on the power play, and they're sixth in the tournament on the power play. And Trubachov showed out of the face-off circles as Ovechkin steps in versus UC Jokin. Ovechkin wins the draw. Fetter Tooth, and he's got a rocket. That shot went off a leg and wide. Pollution. Back down there to Trubachov. To Ovechkin. Ovechkin got pollution posted up side of the goal. There's a shot right on by Dennis Grebeskov that went off a skate wide. Trubachov, that pass bounces high in the corner to Ovechkin. Tried to center that pass, and it's off a of skate and out of the zone. Heads up, dude! The Russians very deliberate on the power play. And Tiemann and carefully there got the puck out. The Finns haven't been great on the penalty kill. Seventh in the tournament. One thing they do do very well though is they block a lot of shots scored and they make it easy for Kerry Layton to see the puck. Well, there's a bad bounce off the end boards, but right to UC Jokinen, and he was fortunate to get that puck out. He's such a reliable player, UC Jokinen, and the thing that makes him so reliable, again, he's got tremendous hockey instincts. He makes a smart play right there. Make sure he takes away the inside part of the ice before he commits to the puck. There are Tukin. Dropping it off there for Kirill Koltsov. Koltsov across the line. Tried to drop it there. And Topi Yako there, fan on the first clearing attempt, now to the line and gets by Korneyev and out. This is good news for the Finns right now. Pitkin and Yakal are their most reliable defensive tandem. They're playing lots more minutes than what we saw in the first period. Konstantin Korneyev bringing the puck ahead, drops it off there for Andrei Teratukin. Teratukin across the line. Leaving it there. 
Parajogan centered it, and that pass went right back down the ice as the Finns have only 25 seconds left to kill in this penalty to Fagerstedt. Igor Grigorenko. His teammate standing still as Grigorenko brings it up the ice. Grigorenko. <laughs> Banshikov. Get all tangled up in the blue line. The Finns chip it back out. Ten seconds to go in this power play. Koltsov across the line. He's brought down. Tried to drop it off. Gets the puck back. Dallas Vara battles for it, and the puck goes over the glass and out of play. Just one second left in the penalty to Juha Fagerstedt. Gore, the Finns have done a great job in creating the tempo they want for this game. That's why they're able to dictate the terms of the game. Early on in the game, it was the Russians that were dictating the pace of the game, and the Finns couldn't keep up. Eric Westerla, Westerlin deserves a ton of credit just by the way he's changed his scheme here in the second period, playing the left wing lock, making sure they chip pucks in deep. Agarodov off that face-off, won by the Finns. Matty Aho battling up along the boards. Timonen trying to flip it out. You see Timonen can't get it out. Jaredev with it. Here comes Nikolai Jaredev with a shot, and that's stopped by Kelly Leitman. And set down the ice. Under five minutes to go in this second period. Finland and Russia still all tied up at one. You like simple better than complicated. You like quick better than slow, so use SpeedPass to pay at ESO. It's fast, there's no fumbling with cash or cards, and it links to a credit card account you already have. To get your free SpeedPass, call us toll free or visit speedpass.ca. You'll like how easy it is to get where you need to be. How do we know? We're drivers too. Welcome back to Halifax. Gord Miller with Pierre Maguire, Bob McKenzie, and Gino Reda, the 2003 World Junior Hockey Championship. The Finns hanging in against the Russians. In fact, the Russians have won the last three medal round games between these two, but a couple of close ones. The 2-1 overtime win in the semifinal last year and a 99 in Winnipeg, a quarterfinal win 3-2. The Finns only have two shots in this period. One of them went in, or sorry, none of them went in, but they're still dictating the terms. And the Russians have had seven shots on goal, but they've missed the net three times on glorious scoring opportunities. Fagerstad controls that draw for the Finns, but Agarodov tried to hop up there. Here comes Finland back the other way. Yoni Pitkin and again leading the rush. He took a bump there from Kondratia. He's played over 17 minutes so far in the game, which is a lot when you consider how much he missed of the first period. And he's playing on one leg. Yeah. Tumpi Yakula. Fires that in for the Finns. Kondratia back to get it. Can't get it by Pickenen. Second chance. Pickenen keeps it in again. Henrik Juntanen. Juntanen. Hammered down there in the corner by Kondratia. And Anchikov comes away with it. Up ahead for Jaredev. Jaredev. For Kygorodov. Kygorodov looking for Jaredev. And that pass is knocked away from him as Henrik Juntanen sends it down. And icing is waved off. Four minutes to go in this second period. Who's going to break this one open? That pass too far for everyone as Artukin was well ahead of the play. And play is called icing. That's the one play the Russians really liked. The long pass off the line change. Sergei Artukin was in behind all the Finnish defensemen. He just couldn't get the puck. But that's a real smart play by the Russians devised by Rafael Ishmatov, the coach, who lost his job earlier this year, as Gord said, coaching in the Soviet Elite League. Fedorov Tutin almost lost the puck to Ninamaki. Ninamaki now gets it. Let the Sella with a chance hit the side of the goal. Ninamaki trying to center it there. Tommy Suka was all alone in front. Let the Sella. Quick finish player with a great stick. Back to the line it goes and look out. Yalas Vara with a shot that was like a field goal as it went high and wide. Yes, and Ninamaki, as we mentioned, told the Oilers he plays like Peter Forsberg, but. This is more along the lines of a Marcus Naslin goal. Again, Under stick for a second. Yeah, not very long, but Bergenheim with the nice feet. Bang! To the back of the goal. Great play. Good communication between Ruth to Bergenheim and Ninamaki. Normally, you wouldn't compare a Finn to a Swede, but since Ninamaki did it, I feel like I can take the license. <laughs> Thomas Eamonen wires that around. You see Timonen stepping up. And the Russians all bottled up here as the puck is stolen by Timonen. The puck bounces high. Gloved ahead there by 
the Finns Eminen and play is called at the Russian blue line. You know, the Finns have started to get into this thing more and more, and I think a big reason why they got to go to their energy guy, Sean Bergenheim, and he loves to initiate on the forecheck. You know he's playing a little bit nicked up and banged up, but again, fearless play, just going in, finishing his check, trying to generate a little bit more emotion. Good job by Bergenheim. Picking it over there to Topi Yakala. Wired around the boards. Natman looking for the loose puck. Jokinen up there as well. Pollution trying to chip it out. You see Jokinen. They fight along the boards. And finally the Russians do clear it out. And the last five minutes of this game have been played within five feet of the boards. That's by design if you're the Finns, Gord. That's how they want to play it. Trubacha up there for Ovechkin. Alexander Ovechkin winding up across the line. Poke check neatly by Yoni Pitkinen. Picking it says, I'll show you a highly ranked prospect as he poke checks that away from Ovechkin. Jokinen for checking Trubachov. Trubachov drops it off for Kirill Koltsov. Koltsov, nifty move there, can't get a shot away. Carry Lathan and hangs on. And we've got two minutes and 37 seconds left in the second. Yuri Trubachev was drafted by the Calgary Flames in 2001 with the fifth pick by the Calgary Flames. He's the second leading scorer in this tournament. He's also number two in assists. One goal, seven assists for eight points. He's not a very big person, but I'll tell you what, he's got great abilities with Ovechkin and Pollution on that first line for the Russians. Maxim Kondraniev plays down the corner. If you, if you make Trubachev 6-2 instead of 5-10, he's a first-round pick instead of a fifth-round pick. Betcha. Igor Grigorenko, he was a first-rounder. Down there for Terazuka. He's buried by Yalis Vara. Now, Tommy Mackey plays it up ahead, and being careful with the puck there was the Russian's Labushin as he was being whacked by Tomo Rutu, and Rutu took a shot as he went off the ice. Tommy Mackey, he's bumped there by Kondratia. Plays it up ahead, Lefty Salo. Couldn't impede the process of Labushin, the progress rather, and Labushin just drops it off. Igor Grigorenko. Grigorenko across the finish line. Here he comes on the off wing, takes a shot. And just getting a stick on it was Timonen. And Lathan had made a good stop. Suka up there. That puck chipped up by Lefty Salo. Dennis Grebeshkov has the puck in his skates. Plays it up ahead for Grigorenko. Here he comes again. Grigorenko, another shot through traffic. Can't get it away. Backhands it in front. Great stop by Lathan. And his pair Jogan got a piece of that puck. And Kerry Lathan then shot the pad out to make the stop. Scotty talked about, Scotty Bowman that is, talked about Igor Grigorenko. And here's an example of how good Igor Grigorenko is. Does a little tap dance oh. on Imunin, puts it through his feet, then feeds it out front. And the quick left pad save from Kerry Lathan. Watch Grigorenko. Little pull, little drag to the feet, go wide on Imunin, put it out front. Just can't oh. finish the play. And there's Kerry Lathan, and that's why he's second overall in the draft last year. That's his emergency save right there. <laughs> And it have to go in the second period. And the longer it's close, the better it is for the Finns. Boltsov took a bump. Fedor Kutin out there as well. That pass too high for everyone. Teeing it up as Yakla. That pass deflects in front. Bergenheim. Oh, and Jukinen shot it wide. Their Ber leading scorer, Jussi Jukinen, misses an empty net. Bergenheim and Jukinen both had great chances and couldn't catch. Final minute of the second period. And what a boost that would have been for the Finns. Kagarodov across the line. Spins, back to the line it goes. Kornev with a shot. That's knocked away by Leighton. Shots are 29 in favor of the Russians. Sherdev trying to drop it there. All tied up on the play was Perejoga. Kornev gets it down for Anshikov. Rutu looking for it in his feet. Under 30 seconds to go in the period. Now the Finns hanging on as Anchikov's forechecking. Down there as well was Zherdev. And Tuomo Rutu flips it up in the air. A foot race for it as Matty Ajo is down there. Bolts off, playing away from him. But right to Topi Yakala. Yakala bearing in, takes a shot that's off a skate. Up over the glass and out of play with less than 10 seconds to play in this second period. Jussi Jokinen led the Finns in scoring at last year's World Junior Hockey Championship. He's got five goals in five games so far in this tournament, and it doesn't get any better than that. But look at the rolling puck. Just a little bit of bad luck for Jussi Jokinen. Can't finish it off. But whew, watch the puck roll a little bit, Gord, right there. That's why he couldn't get good wood on it. And Bergenheim couldn't get it to sit either. He was staring in that open cage as well. Uh, the Islanders should be real excited about Bergenheim. Here we got a little warning. I think there's going to be on the... Yeah, he's telling him, you got to move it on the line changes, or if you're not, we're going to penalize you, Mr. Eshmatov. 
of Radbier. The Finns have been held to two shots on goal in this period, but they've accomplished exactly what they wanted in this game period, exactly what you talked about at the start. Play it close. Play for a bounce. They almost got the bounce five seconds ago. Slow the pace of the game. They made a good adjustment by giving a ton of credit to Erka Westerland going to the left wing lock. His team really looks comfortable in it, and they're creating lots of turnovers off that left wing lock. Through two periods of play here in Halifax. The first spot in the final yet to be determined. Russia won, Finland won. And our live coverage of the 2003 World Junior Hockey Championship will continue on TSN right after this. What is the scent of an avalanche? Smell this. Speed Stick Avalanche, an intense scent that smells good. Cool. Tough 24 hour protection, a scent inspired by the power of nature. By Bannon. So, this is the lightest wheelchair in its category. And as you can see, it has a very small wheelbase. That's okay. giving you very, very sharp turns. Good. Jump in, give it a try. And also, being titanium, you get a lifetime warranty on the frame. So, when is this big party of yours happening? Tomorrow. Probably get totally hammered, drive home. How many times has this happened to you? Well, no more with the new Benchmark Retractivit. It comes with six preloaded bits, including the most common Phillips and square head sizes. Simply pick the one you want, slide it forward, and lock it into place. And now there's Home's new Pocket Size Retractivit Mini. With five bits and a ballpoint pen, it's handy and perfect for precision jobs. The amazing Retractivit in the new Retractivit Mini. Made in Canada, fully guaranteed, and available only at your neighborhood home hardware or home building center. License to kill, death, destruction, mayhem. How long have you been with the agency? Two days. Hold on. <laughs> For the right of your life. <laughs> Max out your system with the ultimate extreme DVD loaded with special features from the director of The Fast and the Furious. I live for this one. Vin Diesel. Dangerous, dirty, uncivilized. I love his attitude. And Triple X. Buy it now on special edition DVD. Ralph, <clears throat> Ralph, get in here. Irritated throat. Oh, apple cinnamon. Fisherman's friend, now an apple cinnamon. Census JVC. Head into Sportcheck for saving this holiday season. Great gift ideas and savings for the entire family. Gifts for your feet, fun, fashion, and the ultimate sports fan. From large items to stocking stuffers, we've got the latest products to fit your budget. Sportcheck, the best, the best value. What is the scent of an avalanche? Smell this. Speed Stick Avalanche, an intense scent that smells good. Cool. Tough 24 hour protection, a scent inspired by the power of nature. By Manon. Oh, it was, it was just real exciting. I think uh, I remember kind of staring up at the flag as it was going up and, and just thinking about, you know, the tournament and, and what had gone on. And, and uh, basically, that, that we, we as a team were, were on top of the world for, for that period of time, which was. Uh, no real exciting. RBC World Junior Fan Fest is the cornerstone of the World Junior Hockey Community Events Program. Located in Halifax, RBC Fan Fest is more than 50,000 square feet, running a total of 10 days, and is expected to attract up to 50,000 people. It's a must see for hockey fans of all ages. Among the attractions is the Chevrolet Celebrity Corner, featuring live interviews and autograph sessions with local and international hockey personalities. Fittingly, there's the CHA's Atlantic Center of Excellence, which has been a key to hockey development throughout Atlantic Canada, 
The display helps promote CHA grassroots development programs regionally in Atlantic Canada and nationally run programs as well. And there's the Heroes of Hockey Auction with selected unique hockey items available for silent auction bidding, including Canada's Black World Junior sweaters worn on December 26th versus Sweden. And welcome back to the Metro Center in Halifax, everyone. I'm Gino Retta with a reminder to stay with us for the second half of our doubleheader on TSN today. Canada and the United States in semifinal action on TSN tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific time. And of course, the Canadian juniors are on quite a roll of the World Junior Hockey Championship. They're the only nation to have medaled for the last four consecutive years, but none of them gold. They haven't won gold since 1997 a year that marked the end of an outstanding run for the Canadian juniors. Here comes Korea, in with LaPointe, Korea, LaPointe, Korea scores! Oh baby, that's a huge goal for Canada. Canadians desperately hoping to end the drought this year. Hey, are you a minor hockey coach and looking for some great drills and tips for your team? Go to www.coachesclub.net and sign up for the CHA's Coaches Club at a discounted price for a limited time. Coaches Club, an interactive wealth of information for all coaches. www.coachesclub.net. Welcome back to the newsroom. Hope you're enjoying the game. We'll get you back to Halifax in just a second. First of all, let me tell you the stories we're working on for the 6.30 edition of Sports Center. We'll have wall-to-wall -wall coverage, World Juniors, including a full preview of tonight's second semifinal between Canada and the United States. We'll also have some of the most memorable moments between these two countries in international hockey. NHL leads forward Michael Renbrick says his left hand became so infected this week, doctors considered amputating it before it became fatal. He's out indefinitely. The team plays the Devils in New Jersey tonight. Also set the stage for tonight's NBA game between the Raptors and Cavaliers. Antonio Davis will be back for that one. Other hockey news, the Canadians have recalled left-winger Marcel Hossa from the Hamilton Bulldogs. Details of these stories and more coming up on SportsCenter at 6.30 Eastern. Enjoy the rest of the hockey game, everyone. Hey, guys, look what the neighbors threw out. 
beer, 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 from a beer, 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 oh. Finding someone's organ. <laughs> the Molson Canadian Bubba, now dressed in team jerseys and perfect for watching the game. I am what hockey has been waiting for. Every shot is a shot at the big time. One shot closer to becoming one of the greatest players and greatest names of the most incredible game in the world. What's your dream? I thought about it when we brought the baby home. Life insurance. I wanted to deal with someone who sees the important things the way I do. I'm a person, not just a policy number. RBC Insurance. It's not about us. It's about you. RBC Insurance. We'll be there with the bright solutions you need to make insurance fit your world. I just remember having a really good summer camp and then a good Christmas camp and it was uh, probably the biggest thrill so far in my career making that team. It was just you know, you grow up watching it on TV every Christmas and whatnot, and it was a dream for me to play, but I just thought maybe it was uh, to get some experience my first year and then maybe make it the next year, but to find out that I made the team is really exciting. Time now for the second period scoring summary brought to you by Chevrolet. Tried, tested, and true. And the story in the second, no scoring. The Finns just two shot on net. The tough Russian defense doing a great job of keeping the Finns away from Andre Medvedev. Joined upstairs by TSN hockey analyst Bob McKenzie. And Bob, as we look ahead to Canada facing Team USA in the second semifinal of the day, faceoffs now about two and a quarter hours away. What do the Canadians have to do to match up well against the Americans? Well, they've got to continue to do what they've been doing all through the tournament, and that is get some great goaltending from Marc-Andre Fleury, who's had the flu all week, but he's better now than he was earlier in the week when he was forced to miss the game and have to come in in relief for David Lenevieu. Uh, so obviously goaltending is a key factor. Balance scoring is a factor. And getting contributions from everybody. And everybody will be all hands on deck for Canada in this game. Jay McClemon, who injured his leg against the Finns last time out, was able to finish that game. But the next day was on crutches and didn't feel particularly well, that bad leg. But it's really responded well. He skated hard, short but sweet, at a Canadian game day skate. So right now, all players expected in the lineup and as healthy as they possibly can be for this game against the U.S. And that's coming up in about two hours and 15 minutes minutes time who will be making it to the gold medal game will it be the Finns or the Russians right now they're tied 1-1 hi I'm Pierre Marc Bouchard join Team Canada on January 3rd semi final action on TSN Canada's sports leader Irritated throat. Oh, apple cinnamon. Fisherman's friend. No, an apple cinnamon. <sighs> what is the scent of an avalanche? Smell this. Speed stick avalanche. An intense scent that smells good. Cool. Tough 24 hour protection. A scent inspired by the power of nature. By Manon. You like simple better than complicated. You like quick better than slow. So use SpeedPass to pay at ESO. It's fast. There's no fumbling with cash or cards. And it links to a credit card account you already have. To get your free SpeedPass, call us toll free or visit speedpass.ca. You'll like how easy it is to get where you need to be. How do we know? We're drivers too. Obviously, the 
new Silverado is here. Silverado, the truck from Chevy. Want to be the talk of the office without embarrassing yourself at the company party? Just show up to work with McDonald's new chicken flatbread. A warm flatbread wrapped around grilled seasoned chicken breast, sauteed onions, and melted processed cheese. McDonald's new chicken flatbread. People will be lining up outside your cubicle for a look. Irritated throat. Oh, apple cinnamon. Fisherman's friend. No, an apple cinnamon. How does lightning smell? Smell this. Speed stick lightning. An intense scent that smells good. Nice. Soft 24 hour protection. A scent inspired by the power of nature. Welcome back to Halifax, where Canadian coach Mark Habscheid looks down from above, alone with his thoughts. Just about two hours away from getting his team on the ice against the United States in the second semifinal. But first, we've got to settle this one. And what Habscheid saw last year in the Czech Republic is what we're seeing now. The Russians and the Finns were tied early in that game last year. It went to overtime before the Russians won it. It was 1-1 through 1 here. The Finns playing it very close to the best, as you might expect. And we are tied at one going into this third period. Trubachov up there for Ovechkin. Pollution with a shot. That's blocked. Yoni Pippen got his leg in front of that. Pollution centers it. Tommy Mackey played that away. Grebyshkov plays it in front. And the Finns on their heels here in the opening seconds of the period. Trubachov played it down there. Yoni Pitkinen being worked over by Trubachov. And Pitkinen comes away with the puck. Can't clear it out as he's all tied up by Trubachev, who's all over him. And this battle continues. And finally, picking to get some help as Topi Yakla ran some interference for him, and the Finns are able to clear. Ovechkin, Chris pass up ahead to Pollution. Pollution with a shot, and that went just wide of the goal. Fifth time in this game that the Russians have had a good scoring chance. They shot high and wide. Alexander Pollution unloaded that one. And falling behind the play was UC Jokin, and he was forechecking furiously for the Finns. Puck play to the open side. Cornea plays it down, heads off. Thomas Ivanov up there for UC Jokinen. His pass hopped over the stick of Sean Bergenheim. And here comes Grigorenko. Nice job by Sean Bergenheim back on the back check. He gets it up to Matty Nathanen. He does all the little things well. And here he comes with the puck. Sean Bergenheim across the line. Drops it off. Great chance. And Thomas Ivanov with the shot. Stopped by Andre Medvedev. UC Timonen, rather. In the first period when the Finns didn't have it going, they didn't have it going from Bergenheim, who looked like he was really a little bit slow. But in the second and the third period, Bergenheim's picked up the pace of the game. He's tried to energize. There's that good little play, little back pass right there. Leaves it there softly so they can jump in and create the chance. In comes the player. Boom, goes a shot on goal. And Timonen can't finish it. But then Sean Bergenheim, what a good little player. Yalasvara plays that up ahead to Tommy Suka. And the Russians able to cheer, chip it up as Zherdev gets it to Kaigarodov. Right in there by Enchikov, and Yaskalainen's back there for Finland. Table Yaskalainen banked that off the boards and out. Labushin up there for Zherdev, who wasn't prepared for that pass. Gord, until the Russians decide to change their tactics and start attacking the right-hand side of the ice of the Finns, the left-hand side for the Russians, they're not going to have easy penetration into the Finnish zone. And here's Suka causing trouble for them as he falls. Zherdev brings it ahead. Nikolai Zherdev, maybe the number one pickup coming in the NHL draft. Zherdev across the line. That shot off a leg right down to Kelly Leighton. There's no one nearby, but Leighton hops on the puck and... Jaredev shaking up as he goes to the bench. Great job by the Finns. After the first period, they needed the stabilizing. And look at how many blue sweaters are back. There's nowhere for the Russians to go. And a little quick stick there from the team and into the wrist of Zverdev. Zverdev's a little bit sore. Son, if you want to play in the NHL, you'll have to fight through that. Grebyshka, his shot through traffic. Kerry Leighton and saw that in the last second. Artukin plays it down in the corner. He had the first Russian goal early in the first period. It looks as if they might have had their way. It looked as if they might have their way with the Finns who battled back with a late power play goal in the first. Artuka took a slash. Pestinov a shot. That's off the leg of Yakala. 
Pesanov battling for it. Grebyshkov pitches up to keep it in. Shishkinov up on the boards, gets it back. He's being worked over down there by Fagerstad, who gives away a lot of size, but is able to clear it down the ice. Icing waved off. Fedor Tutin back for the Russians. And the pace of this game has slowed to a crawl, Pierre. No, it's perfect for the Finns. This is what they wanted. They got the left wing lock in place. They're frustrating the Russians in the neutral zone, and they're relying on their goaltender when they have to have him. Konstantin Korneyev lays it up there. Alexander Ovechkin in behind the goal for Pollution. Alexander Pollution tied up by Thomas Timonen. And you see Timonen comes up with a puck. He's brought down. Here's a chance. And a quick shot scores. Yuri Trubachov. Just like that, it's 2-1 Russia. That's been the only weakness in the Finns game all afternoon, not being strong in the puck in their own zone. The Russians just wanted the puck a little bit more. Pollution's engaged with Imanen. Good job. But there comes the support. Soft on the puck by Timonen. Good battle won by Ovechkin. Turnover's created, and there's a snapshot high, and that's where they've been shooting all afternoon. High on Kerry Lehtinen, and they finally get a chance. Bad turnover, good bad check by Ovechkin. In comes Trubachev, and he finishes it off. And Trubachev pulls even now with Canada's Carlo Koliakovo for the tournament scoring lead. They've each got nine points. So we'll see if now the Finns have to apply some more pressure. Early in this third period, Russia has seized a two-to-one lead. Yalisvara with a shot, and Medvedev steers that away. After that, he's all tied up. Bergenheim pitches it back. And Yalisvara's shot knocked down by UC Jokinen, who tipped it while falling. And now it's up to Perez Jogan. He gets by Yalisvara. Perez Jogan on the breakaway, takes the shot, scores! 3 1 Russia in control. Body language doesn't lie. Take a look at the Finnish bench, take a look at the Russian bench. The Russians are all up, they're very engaged and very excited. The Finns' heads buried in the sand. All again about winning one-on-one -on -one battles. Perez Ogan does a great job getting by the defenseman for the Finns. And by driving wide, Jaska Leinen doesn't do a good job in containing him. Jaska Leinen's got to do a much better job. And there's not much that the goaltender can do. Leighton and he's exposed. But Perez Ogan does a great job finishing the playoff. Goals 37 seconds apart for the Russians. And they take a 3-1 to -one lead. Topi Yakala. Plays it down there for Tommy Suka. Now the Finns will have to open it up. Yakala with a shot. That's knocked down. Here's a long lead feed for Zherdev. Nikolai Zherdev. Nifty move, but Yoni picked it and took it from him. And you'll notice that the uh, Zherdev is knocked down behind the play. No call. You'll notice that the Russian outburst comes with Pitkin on the bench, not on the ice. Hmm. Inamaki. Yes, and Inamaki trying to bear in. He's ridden off the puck neatly by Dennis Grebyshka. You'll see team in it. And here's another turnover almost as Tommy Mackey sends it back in. And Grebyshkov is back for the Russians. Five minutes into the third period, Russia looking to punch a ticket to Sunday night's final. The first goal, Perizhogin from Grigorenko at 4.05. Rather, the third goal is Perizhogin from Grigorenko. The first was Trubachov unassisted. And Russia with a two goal lead here in the third period. Want to be the talk of the office without embarrassing yourself at the company party? Just show up to work with McDonald's new chicken flatbread. A warm flatbread wrapped around grilled seasoned chicken breast, sautéed onions, and melted processed cheese. McDonald's new chicken flatbread. People will be lining up outside your cubicle for a look. Fifth-round pick Yuri Trubachov made it 2-1 to one with his second goal of the tournament at 328. And then 37 seconds later, it was Montreal first-rounder Alexander Perezhogin with the insurance goal, his third of this World Junior, 3-1 Russia. A miracle would be required for the Finns to win this game right now. They just don't have much ammunition left. Will Finland be forced to play for bronze for a second straight year? They were third last year, second the year before. Finland, the last country to win the World Junior Championship on home ice. That was back in 1998. It's only happened four times in the last 20 years that a team has won the World Junior on home ice. Air Canada proudly sponsored the 2000.
And we mentioned that Calgary's got a decided interest in this game. Andre Teratukin, a second round pick in 2001. Medvedev, second round as well that year. And Yuri Trubachev, a fifth round pick in 2001. Stepping across the line, Tomo Rutu, he was poke check. Shishkinov looking for the loose puck, and the Russians won't let a foot off the gas. They'll keep those long bomb passes coming. They'll keep the pressure coming as well. And they're a much more responsible defensive team than they've been in a lot of years, Gord. Everybody's saying this is probably the best core of Russian defensemen since 1991 when they had Mironov and Kasparaitis and Olsenitz. Artukin steps across the line. That shot steered away by Kerry Leitonen. Shot to 23-12 in favor of the Russians. Artukin. Trying to get a shot away, looking there for Kirill Koltsov. Back to the point it goes, and it's chipped by Koltsov by Mati Aho. Aho steps across the line, plays it down to the corner. Six minutes gone in the third period. Finns need a break or something to get them back in the hockey game. Koltsov up ahead to Pollution. Alexander Pollution across the line, trying to step through two defenders, gets a shot away, and Leighton it makes a good stop. You see Jokinen. Up there for Yalasvara. Jokinen in for a speeding. Bergenheim who takes a shot high and wide. Jokinen back to the line. Yaskalainen with a shot right on. Medvedev gets a piece of it, hangs on with 6.31 gone. Erka Westerlund's coached a very solid World Junior Hockey Championship for the Finns. He's going to have to squeeze a little bit more out of his team if they're going to have a chance. But Gord, they look like a depleted bunch right now. The injuries are starting to take their toll. The bumps and the bruises over a long grind here in the tournament. And they don't look like they have a lot of gas or a lot of speed left to compete against the quicker and fresher Russians. Russians looking to go to 5-0 in this World Junior Hockey Championship. And later on tonight, two teams riding four-game winning streaks will meet Canada and the U.S. Yakula with a shot. And that puck still loose in front. Hit the Russian player, and he may be hurt as the puck is finally knocked out. Tara Tukin got nailed with that shot from the point, and he remains on the ice. Oh. Bad luck for Tara Tukin because the Russians initially won that faceoff, didn't do a good job clearing the puck. There comes a point shot coming right in. Oh, Ooh, baby, that got him right in a bad spot. That's high, and yeah. that's a nasty shot. Boy, that puck's fluttering, too. Karatukin is up and his teammates give him a push towards the bench. The good news is there's no blood. It didn't get him in the facial area, so he's got to be excited about that. The bad news is he probably lost a little bit of air. He plays up in Olmsk in Siberia. What a story that is. Ivan Holinka is the coach. Yeah, Ivan Holinka, the former coach of the Penguins, is up there. So are a lot of names you'd recognize, Yuri Schlager and others. Schlager's making a million dollars a year playing there, believe it or the not. The team is owned by a Russian oil billionaire who is paying millions of dollars in transfer fees to bring high-profile players to the middle of Siberia. The nice only place to live. <laughs> it's a six-hour flight north of Moscow. To give you an idea of where Omsk is. The Russians regrouping in their own zone, as they so often do. Fedor Tutin up to Igor Grigorenko. Perezhogin steps up as well. Good pass for him, went under his stick. Perezhogin in the corner for Grigorenko. Igor Grigorenko spins in the corner. Trying to walk up, scores! Banks it off, Kerry Leighton, 4-1, Russia. Now you know why the Detroit Red Wings keep being so strong. They draft players like Igor Grigorenko. They're so creative, they're so smart. Grigorenko spins away from traffic, buys time for himself. Watch his head, he's identifying right now. He sees Leighton's cheating for the pass. He rifles one right off Leighton into the back of the goal. That is on purpose, ladies and gentlemen. He saw Leighton pull off the pole, and he puts it right off Leighton. And look at how he pulls off a little bit right there. The player identifies, snaps it right off the leg. Igor Gregorenko, a second round pick in 2001. He'll be playing in Detroit, not too far down the road. Gregorenko's fifth goal of this World Junior Hockey Championship. Ovechkin has the tournament goal scoring lead as Rutu is brought down. No penalty on that play. Haven't had a power play in a while in this hockey game. As Tomo Rutu comes over, Ovechkin leads the tournament with six. Rutu, a battle in the corner, and a penalty will be coming up finally. We'll return to Halifax and sort it out in a moment. Hey guys, look what the neighbors threw out. Beer, 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 bubble of beer, 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 oh, when we get together, just me and all the lads, everyone remembers all the fun we had, cause every time we gather, there's plenty of good cheer. Imagine fun.
finding someone's organ. <laughs> the Molson Canadian Bubba, now dressed in team jerseys and perfect for watching the game. McDonald's is a proud sponsor of the Canadian Hockey Association and a supporter of grassroots hockey through programs such as the McDonald's Skills Development Camps. McDonald's, premier sponsor of the CHA. Carol Koltsov goes off for slashing. Mentioned earlier that Canucks GM Brian Burke said a bit of a different cat. The Russians won the under 18 a couple years ago. And while the team celebrated on the ice, Koltsov stood by the bench by himself and watched. And he saw the slash there that snapped his own stick in two. So he goes off. Finland down 4-1 to one with a chance to call a little closer. But Kerry Lathan's head has been down ever since giving up that fourth goal. And a chance there, shorthanded. Here comes Perjogan breaking in. Perjogan bearing in. And a great play there by Yoni Pickett. And he's hurt. Pickett and sliding into the end boards after taking the puck from Perijogan, and he has injured his left shoulder. But well, that's called championship effort right there from Yanni Pitkin, and he could have quit on that play, decided not to. Here comes Grigorenko working on Pitkin, and Leighton and clears that away, and the Russians are now all over them as Grigorenko comes up with a steal. They're just revving it up right now. They're starting to have some fun here because the Finns have had to open it up. And. Pitkin finally, finally gets a chance to go to the bench if he wants it. Here's a long lead feed for Bergenheim. Bergenheim breaking in. And a good play by Kondrat. You have to knock him off stride. Puck centered, and Pitkin stays out and keeps it in. What a performance by Yoni Pitkin. And Yalisvaro with a shot. That stopped in front and cleared down the ice by Enchikov. Well, I had the privilege of coaching Chris Pronger at 19 years of age. Uh, Yoni Pitkin is 19 years of age, and I see a lot of similarities between the two in terms of character and desire to be champions. That puck backhanded out by Tara Tukin with 45 seconds left in this Finnish power play. So the Canadian players and coaches looking on, and they're seeing the Russians throw it into another gear. Yalis Vara right on to Medvedev, and Medvedev wires that right back down the ice. You have to say, his puck handling has improved dramatically from last year. Boy, he's an awkward-looking athlete, though. You would never know that he's a world-class athlete with that body type. <laughs> but you know what? His only job is to get in the way of things. It's amazing. No, you're absolutely right. I'll tell you what, he takes up a lot of space. <laughs> Kravishkov, long lead pass there, and Kaigarodov almost had a shorthanded breakaway. Berjogin breaking in onside. And it's the Russians shorthanded who are applying all the pressure here. Uh, they're, like we said before, Gord, they're just starting to have some fun right now, and, and that's what this tournament's about for the Russians. When they get a chance to bury somebody, they go out and do it, and this is where their chance to bury the Finns is. Koltsov just out of the penalty box. Comes up with the puck for Russia while the line change is completed. Look at Koltsov, just lands casual, as you'd like to say. Yeah, I hope he turns it over and there's a breakaway. That'd be <laughs> fun to watch. <laughs> he might hear it from you if you were coaching him. Artukin steps in. Artukin, who opened the scoring for the Russians, back he goes to Koltsov for Artukin. They're going globetrotters on him now. Yeah. You got that right. You see Yokin and finally knocked that pass down, plays it rink wide, broken up by Koltsov. They're just having fun. This is scary. It's like watching a practice. Yeah. Shishkinov plays it over there for Korneyev. Konstantin Korneyev backhands it down. Shishkinov gives Leighton in a bump on the way by. Fagerstedt comes up with it for Yoni Pitkinen. Back out there for Finland. Pitkinen picking his way across the line. Spilled by Korneyev and down goes Pitkinen again. There's just no quit in that kid's game and that's why Philadelphia's got to be so excited when you look at the fact they're going to get Pitkinen and Jeff Wojtka, another championship kind of guy. You look at adding players like that on defense. I already have young Dennis Seidenberg there. Philadelphia's going to be a good team. I can't imagine Hitchcock wouldn't be happy having those guys. True job with it. Centering it for Ovechkin. That pass was high and bounced by him. And Yalis Vara. Brings it up for Finland. 11 minutes gone here in the third period. Russia looking good for a, a chance to repeat as gold medalists as they'll advance to the gold medal game. The Russians have won medals at the World Junior nine times in the last 10 years. Ovechkin sends it across. Pollution with a shot, and that's stopped by Kerry Layton. TSN's live coverage of the World Junior Hockey Championship returns after this.
Today's game story brought to you by Chevrolet. Tried, tested, and true. The Russians broke it open with a pair of goals. 37 seconds apart in the third. They're out shooting the Finns by a 2-1 margin. Yoni Pitkin, though, big story for the Finns again, playing in his last World Junior Hockey Championship. Over 25 minutes of ice time, and we've still got eight and a half minutes to go. Yoni Pitkin went to Philadelphia's training center in the summertime and worked out with their training staff who came away monstrously impressed with his conditioning and his work ethic. They said his core stability, basically his torso, is as good as they've seen in a player that age. Nikodin plays it up there for Thomas Eminen. He loses the puck and back come the Russians, Teratukin for Perejogin. He's been all over them in the third period. Perejogin reverses it to the other side and they still haven't seen it. Teratukin whacks at it and nifty little play there by Perejogin to play it to the back side. Yeah, Perejogin's a very good draft pick by the Montreal Canadiens and this line has been great with Greg Aranko and Teratukin. One of the things that they do very well is they create offense off the rush and off the cycle and they dominated down low. There was that nifty little play by Perejogin trying to get the puck and fool Leitinen around the wraparound. He also plays up at Omsk in Siberia. Nice to have money in the Russian Elite League. If you have it, you're going to be successful. Grigorenko steps in for the faceoff and comes up with the puck. Igor Grigorenko lost the puck there to Yoni Pickett. And then Mackey centered it in front of his own goal. But fortunately, a teammate was there. Suka and Pickett steps across the line offside. He never stops coming after you. And that's Yoni Pickett of the Finnish team. And can't say enough good things about him. I know it sounds like a broken record, but he's just a champion guy. And this is how you identify. And you know what? I think if the Tampa Bay Lightning had a mulligan, they would rather have Yanni Pitkinen than Ruslan Fedotenko. They traded Ruslan Fedotenko, of course, or acquired Ruslan Fedotenko for a first round pick, which the Flyers used to take Yanni Pitkinen. Kagarodov. Up ahead for Enchikov. Leighton clears that away. 12 minutes gone here in the third period. And the Russians steamrolling their way to the gold medal game. They haven't won back-to-back -back gold since the early 1980s when they were the Soviet Union. Koltsov, Kirill Koltsov across the line. Looking there for Anshikov, and Leighton plays that away. The Russians have won nine medals the last ten years, as I mentioned. The only one time they didn't, on home ice, they finished seventh a couple of years ago. And that's a finish that still sticks in their craw. Picking and leaving it there for... Teemu Jaskalainen. It appears as though Finland will be forced to play for a bronze for a second straight year. Jaskalainen for Jalasvara. They can take some consolation from the fact that the Swedes played earlier today in the relegation side of this tournament. That's right. They won against Belarus. Pestinov steps up. Belarus and Germany will be going down. And coming up from the B sections will be Austria and Ukraine next year. By the look of that second tournament, two different qualifying tournaments in the B group. Oh. Is look out as our two can our you say freight train? He just freight trained two Finns who were trying to get off the ice. He plays in the Quebec Major Junior League with Moncton. There's a little example of North American hockey. Nevedev back for the Russians, looking to run their record to five and zero. Oh. And then tonight the lid will come off this building when Canada plays the U.S. with that second. Final berth at stake. Here's a long lead feed just out of the reach of pollution. Eminen takes him out hard. Oh, well, Vetchkin steps into his man. And Greg Grebyshkov keeps it in. Back to the line it goes. Trubachov with a shot. And Kerry Lehtinen snags the glove out to make that stop. The Russian bench has got to be excited by the fact that they're getting through this game without a lot of bumps and bruises. Obviously, the Finnish team having to play one more game and having a more arduous route to getting to this semi-final game. So the Russian bench with a lot of the great players like Pollution and Trubachev and Ovechkin and Grigor, uh, Grigorenko and Teratukin and Perezogin, those guys got to be feeling pretty good about themselves right now and saying, you know what, we're looking forward to whoever we're going to play in the final. Ovechkin steps in for the draw, moves it forward, and Ovechkin still with it. Now poke check off the puck. Tommy Suka. Up ahead there for Yesa Ninamaki. He's wallpapered right in front of the Russian bench, and the puck goes into that bench and out of play. Got to be excited if you're a scout watching Alexander Ovechkin, and it's not just his creativity offensively, Gord. It's his ability to get physical with people. We saw him in the initial shift in the game going right after Yanni Pitkinen and putting Pitkinen down. We haven't seen that 
any time in this tournament. And then out during the last sequence, he goes after uh, Finnish defenseman Yakula and puts him right down. So Alexander Ovechkin is a physical guy as well as a skill guy. Bergenheim with a shot, and Medvedev shot the pad out to make that stop. Root to the rebound, and Medvedev made that save. Up along the boards it goes, and Parajogan up there for Grigorenko. Igor Grigorenko picked it and takes him out hard. Bergenheim back the other way. Quick pass there, broken up by Cornea. Up for Tara Dukin to Parajogan. Back for Tara Dukin. He's tripping the puck by UC Jokin, and here's a partial break for Bergenheim. Takes a shot. It's off a stick. And Bergenheim appears to have been hurt again. His shoulder yeah. is really bothering him, and he's had problems with that throughout the tournament. And Korneyev is a guy that really blasted him into outer space. Bergenheim's been playing with lots of little nicks and injuries, and watch Korneyev come in from the right of your screen. Here he comes, and here's the El Kabong right there. Korneyev engaging Bergenheim, and that is not going to feel good. Here he comes again, and there's the hit. Yeah, and you can see the left arm yeah. really hanging at a strange angle. Yang Pascalina with a shot, and Andre Medvedev will hang on. Pulled last year in the gold medal game was Andre Medvedev. His team was down three to one to Canada, and they battled back and won that game four to three. Anton Volchenkov scored the winner for the Russians in the gold medal game against Canada last year. What a year he's having with the Ottawa Senators! For him. <laughs> and that puck is chipped out as we. Reach the final few minutes of this third period in the first of two semifinals. Labushin dropping it off for Zherdev. Quick shot there and save made by Kerry Leitinen. And boy, you've got to feel badly for Kerry Leitinen and the Finns as they've really battled, but they're just running out of bodies. No Miku Koivu before the tournament. Then they come over here and Tomo Rutu gets hurt. Bergenheim gets hurt. Yoni Pitkinen's hurt. They're just running out of guys. And then they had to play last night in a quick turnaround. They had the late game last night against Slovakia, so they get the quick turnaround playing this afternoon here in Halifax, and that's not an easy thing to do. Leti Salo in behind the finish goal. And the two combatants in the gold medal game will get a day off tomorrow. And what a huge break that will be. So many teams go limping into that gold medal game having played the night before. Artukin looking for it. Kelly Lippin has put it away from him. Nice backhand pass to Yesen Ninamaki. Ninamaki trying to step around his man. Nothing doing. Dennis Grebyshkov stepped into him. That's a mature play. Grebyshkov right there getting physical in a hurry. Now here come the Russians two on one. Fedor Tutin with Artukin and they step across the line. Offside is the call. Less than five minutes to go here in the third. Phone lines are busier than ever across Canada because Ring In and Win is coming to a close soon. But there's still time to join the thousands who've already won. From a guaranteed $500 off and more, you could even win your vehicle. Plus, get 0% purchase financing. Happy holidays. Hurry, GM Ring In and Win ends January 13th. Always trying to improve, improve. the Russians are looking to go to 5-0. In this tournament, and they've blown it wide open in the third period. Yuri Trubachev took the feed from Alexander Ovechkin and scored to make it 2-1. to one. And the seconds after that, Alexander Perezhogin with a terrific individual effort. And then the most intriguing goal of the period, Igor Grigorenko sees a sliver of daylight and banks the puck off Kerry Leitinen. 4-1, Russia leading Finland. That reminds me of Mary Lemieux doing that to Eddie Belfer in the 1992 Stanley Cup Final. I'll be sure to tell Grigorenko that. He'll say, who, who? <laughs> <laughs> they might have heard of Mary Lemieux in Russia. Maybe. Suka up ahead to Tuomo Rutu. Rutu being watched by Trubachev. Oh. Rutu tries to spin away and look out. A breakaway chance there for Ovechkin. That pass was just broken up. Ovechkin poaching a little bit, looking for another goal. Tomisuka for Jokin with a shot through traffic. That goes wide. Yoni picking it in front. Rebound, and you see Jokin can't get a shot away. Topi Yakula, and it trickles down to Medvedev. Still loose. They bang away at it, and you see Jokin again can't get a shot away. Picking it. Back to Yakula. Topi Yakula. That puck loose in front. Picking it battles for it. Backhand shot. Medvedev to save. Rebound. And Jokin again a shot away. Medvedev makes the stop. Rebound. Rutu knocked down and finally a penalty coming up as there was a rugby scrum in front of the Russian goaltender Andre Medvedev 
And heading off will be Konstantin Korneyev. You have to admire courage, and the Finns are showing a lot of courage right now. They're losing, they're beat, they're tired, but they don't show any quit at all. And a good job by Medvedev staying with it, but bad rebound control. Jokinen just can't finish the playoff. Here comes Pitnik in to create a chance, and you'll see the penalty coming up right in this situation. Well, we just see it right there to the side of your screen. But a good job by is. the Finns to compete. There's the cross check right there. And Finland has called a timeout with three and a half minutes to go here in the third period. And Korneyev heads off for the Russians. And this building starts the buzz, and you feel the energy on the street when you walk around. Everyone in Halifax talking about the game tonight. Canada and the United States on the heels of Salt Lake City, on the heels of so many great battles in the World Cup and elsewhere. Canada and the U.S. in the second semifinal. It comes your way tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. And we can't wait. Looking forward to that. You can throw out the form charts. You can throw out the past histories. When those two face each other, it is a battle. And, of course, all the, the border battles, whether it's the Canada Cup in 91, the 96 World Cup, the 97 World Junior when Canada won in Geneva. The last of five straight. Topi Yakla with a shot. That's knocked down. Jokinen flashed again on a chance. Another penalty coming up to the Russians. Or rather, Leighton and heads to the bench and picked it with a shot. Kerry Leighton went to the bench for the extra attacker, rather. And so essentially a two-man advantage for the Finns with 3.15 to go in the period. Erka Rutsland is not quitting at all, though. That's one of the reasons why he pulled Kerry Leighton and he called a timeout to organize a play. Good coaching structure from Erka Rutsland. Just can't get the play by Medvedev. Now the Russians are going to call a timeout so they can get everything settled down in their own zone. I thought it was a 4-1 game. Did I miss something uh, you here? You did, yeah. So did the Russian coach, Mr. Uh, Ishmatov. Have the Finns figured out a way to kick a field goal in this game and tie it? They're working on it. It's a new structure. You, you shoot know, from outside and, the blue line, it counts for three. And you know what? You feel so badly for teams that lose this game because then you've got to go play in that bronze medal game. I wish they could come up with a way to award a team a bronze medal without having to play that game. They just sleepwalk through it. Although Canada and the U.S. played a pretty good one a couple years ago in Sweden and went to a shootout. But that was because they hate each other. <laughs> I was going to say, Sweden and Finland, if they played against one another, they hate each other as well. Hey, you know what? The fifth place game in this tournament has the Czechs against the Slovaks. That's always good for some broken lumber. Oh, it will be. <laughs> Carbon fire will be fiber. will be shattered everywhere. 3.17 to go in the third period. The finish net remains empty. We have a clear view all the way down the ice where the faceoff is. As the Finns are on the power play and have an additional attacker. Rutu off the faceoff. It's all tied up. You only pick it with the puck at the linesman's feet. Plays it up there to UC Jokinen. Jokinen. Tomo Rutu tips that just wide. Rutu. Muscled off the puck for the moment. Trying to grab it back. Suka steps up, picking it with the puck at the point. Yoni picked it in backhand shot off the side of the goal. That deflected just out of Medvedev's reach. And finally cleared down by the Russians. And look out, Perejogan's up there poaching. And picking it has to hustle back. Perejogan centers it out of the reach of Tara Tukin. And remember, that's probably one of the reasons the coach called a timeout. I said, you can ice Oh, the look puck. out. Penalty coming up to the Russians. I think Tara Tukin got a stick up puck loose in front. They battle away for it. And Tuomo Rutu was gooned right at center ice. You see Jokinen. Mariajo with a shot. That's high and wide. Finns already have six skaters on the ice. Pitkinen. Yoni Pitkinen. Cross ice feed. Dinamaki steps up. Looking for UC Jokinen. 45 seconds ago on this penalty. Another one coming up to the Russians. Cross ice they go. Pitkinen. In front. And that was blocked in front. You see Jokinen. Centers it. Medvedev knocks that away. Still hasn't been touched by the Russians. Picking it. Last two minutes of this period. And Amaki steps up. You see Jokinen with it. Picking it. Posted up at the side of the goal. Now has it. Picking it. Takes a shot. Deflects in front. And finally, Grebyshkov touches it. And Fedor Tutin gets into it with Tommy Suka. But about two minutes ago, Tuomo Rutu. Might actually have been speared at center ice. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the Russians know how to identify star players early on in the game. They went after Yanni Pitkin in this situation right here. Tuomo Rutu battling for a loose puck. Oh. There's a high stick, a little carved job. 
by Teratukin to the face of Rutu. And don't forget, Titkinen had his noggin knocked off right here in this situation from Teratukin again. So they clearly know how to identify and get after the right guy. So don't tell me scouting's not involved in this tournament or any other time the Russians well, are involved. I, I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. He didn't spear him, but he did get the high yeah, stick up. So a two-man advantage for 11 seconds for the Finns. It's actually a three-man advantage as Lathan remains out of the goal. Minamaki, back to the point, Ibanen. Thomas Ibanen. From Pimkinen. Korneyev steps out of the penalty box. Now they're playing six on four. Rutu back out there to Minamaki. Minamaki battling for it to the line, and Ibanen can't hold it at the line. And Korneyev's all over him. Yoni Pitkinen. He's all tangled up with Korneyev. Plays it up there to UC Jokinen. <laughs> yes, and Inamaki walking in for Finland. Inamaki takes a shot. Edmund have a good stop. Final minute of play here in the third period. 4-1 Russia. Imanen. Up ahead to Rutu. Nifty move there at the line by Rutu. Still with it. Tuomo Rutu. Trying to leave it there for Inamaki, who now comes up for it. Fagerstad can't get a shot away. Backhands at the corner. Jokinen centers it. And it's finally cleared out by Kornea. Just missed the open net. And now jumping up for it is Kaigarodov, who just fired it wide of the open cage. Fedor Tutin will take a chance. And every Russian wailing away at the open net here. <laughs> Mati Aho to Yoni Pitkinen. Up ahead they go. Here comes Yalis Vara to Imanen. And he's knocked out. There's a hard shot right on. Medvedev makes the stop. Can't find it. And finally does get a face off with just six and a half seconds to go here in the third period. I'll tell you one thing right now. If Russia plays Canada and Artukin does this kind of stuff tomorrow, he's going to get planted by some guys. He's reckless with his stick. He's running around trying to be a tough guy in the slot area. And I'm going to tell you right now, Gord, if Canada plays this team, you'll see Artukin come in with a little jab right there with his stick, the attempted spear, and then he tries to be a tough guy down low with a tired fin. I'll tell you, tomorrow, or if Canada Sunday? gets there, Sunday, you mean? Or Sunday, excuse me. I'm just wrapped are up. You, are you doing a game tomorrow? I'm you're taking, not? I'm taking the day off. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Good point by you. Yalas Varad back to Yaskalainen. That shot drifts wide. And as Petronov comes up with it, that'll do it. The Russians, in a close game for two periods, blow it open with three in the third. And Russia will go to the gold medal game for the second consecutive year and will await the winner of the Canada-U.S. game to see who it'll face to defend its World Junior Hockey Championship. Russians four, Finland won. The Finns are off to the bronze medal game. The Russians will play for gold on Sunday. The 2003 IIHF World Junior Hockey Championship on TSN is brought to you by ESSO at ESSO Weird Drivers 2 by RBC Financial Group, supporting hockey dreams in your community from grassroots to Olympics. By Nike Hockey, question what was with what could be. And by McDonald's, there's a little McDonald's in everyone. You like simple better than complicated. You like quick better than slow. So use SpeedPass to pay at Esso. It's fast, there's no fumbling with cash or cards and it links to a credit card account you already have. To get your free speed pass, call us toll free or visit speedpass.ca. You'll like how easy it is to get where you need to be. How do we know? We're drivers too. This trip meant so much to us. So when it came to travel insurance, we wanted to deal with someone who understands, someone who'd be there if we needed them. RBC Insurance. It's not about us. It's about you. RBC Insurance. We'll be there with the bright solutions you need to make insurance fit your world. I am what hockey has been waiting for. Every shot is a shot at the big time. One shot closer to becoming one of the greatest players and greatest names of the most incredible game in the world. What's your dream? Want to be the
the talk of the office without embarrassing yourself at the company party? Just show up to work with McDonald's new chicken flatbread. A warm flatbread wrapped around grilled seasoned chicken breast, sautéed onions, and melted processed cheese. McDonald's new chicken flatbread. People will be lining up outside your cubicle for a look. The 2003 Double IHF World Junior Hockey Championship on TSN is brought to you by the Molson Canadian Bubba Collector Can. Dressed for a limited time in team jerseys, it's perfect for watching the game with the guys. By Chevrolet. Chevrolet is proud to support young Canadian talent through sponsorship of the Double IHF World Junior Hockey Championship. And by Speed Stick. Welcome back to the Metro Center in Halifax, where Russia defeats Finland by a final score of four to one. Time now for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Fisherman's Friend Lozenges. 1-1, tie game. Early in the third period, and the Russians blow it open. Yuri Trubachev scores, and then just 37 seconds later, Alexander Perezolgin will score as well. Two goals in a 37-second span, and from then, it was over. A cash donation will be made to the Coach Association of Canada for the training and development of amateur sports on behalf of TSN and Fisherman's Friend Lozenges. Fisherman's Friend affects you. The defending World Junior Hockey Champions are back on their way to the gold medal game as Russia defeats Finland by a score of 4-1. to one. But who will they face in that gold medal game? That will be decided coming up tonight on TSN at 7 Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific time. It's Canada versus the United States in what has become an incredibly bitter border battle. Until then, for Pierre Maguire, Gord Miller, and Bob McKenzie, I'm Gino Retta saying so long and thanks for joining us. The World Junior Hockey Championships on TSN. This has been a presentation of TSN, Canada's sports leader. Sports leader. Pardon the interruption, but I'm Jackie McMullen in from Michael Wilbon. Hey, Tony, does Wilbon only work when he feels like it? I'm Tony Kornheiser. Wilbon's working right now. Sitting by a pool in Phoenix, working on a couple of Kia Royales and his tan line. Picture that, America. PTI, boys and girls. Wilbon's out at the Fiesta Bowl, so our good friend Jackie McMullen of the Boston Globe is bailing him out. And we start with the final and only truly important bowl game, tonight's Fiesta Bowl game for the national championship between Miami and Ohio State. And Jackie, with all the storm and drawing about Maurice Claret, it seems to have gone unnoticed that Miami is working on a 34-game winning streak and going for its second straight national championship. So let's cut to the chase. Do you think Miami's going to win? If so, by how many? Miami's going to win this game, and they're probably going to win by around two touchdowns because how do you stop this group? And while we're talking about streaks, how about Ken Dorsey, 38-1 and one as a starter? How does this guy finish fifth in the Heisman Trophy voting? He finishes, I don't understand. He it. finishes fifth in the Heisman because he's got to split the votes with Willis McGahee. McGahee. I wish you'd been here for months because I've been arguing with Wilbon. I think Dorsey is very underrated, very underappreciated. There's some notion out there that anybody can be the trigger man for this team, and I don't think that's true. Uh, there's no way that's true. Now, he does have great receivers in, in Winslow and Johnson, but, but, you know, everybody makes a misstep somewhere along the way. Ken Dorsey really hasn't. They've got all the speed, I believe, on their side of the ball. If Ohio State had that kind of speed, they'd approximate it in practice, and then they'd use it in the game. Right. What happens when Ohio State sees speed like they've never seen? 
Well, the best way to contract speed is if they're zooming up the line, they get seven yards on them. Hit them so hard that they think the next time about going up the line. That's the only chance Ohio State has. So you want it to be a brawl if you're Ohio State, you, you favor a brawl at this point. Well, I don't know about a brawl, but you got to hit these guys and make them, you know, if they make a catch, hit them. Much like the Patriots did to the St. Louis Rams. If they catch the ball, level. That's interesting. There's a great disparity in, in p potential pro talent, though. Ron Jaworski told me earlier today that Butch Davis, a couple of years ago when he left Miami, handed him a program and said of the roster, at the time, 40 guys would be in the NFL. Ohio State doesn't have 40. You know what? Ken Dorsey's going to be one of them. USC quarterback Carson Palmer further cemented his claim to the Heisman Trophy by pummeling Iowa and Heisman runner-up Brad Banks last night in the Orange Bowl. Now, sure, USC has two losses, but they outscored UCLA, Notre Dame, and Iowa 134-51 to in their final three games. So I ask you, Tony... Wouldn't you love to see one more football game with USC playing the winner of the Fiesta Bowl? Well, you'd like to see it because of Carson Palmer. He was so impressive late in the season, had his biggest games on the biggest stage. You'd like to see him do this big, big, strong kid. And obviously, that's not going to happen. You covered New England with yes. Bledsoe. He reminds me of Bledsoe. Is it an accurate comparison? Well, he has. I don't know if he quite has the arm strength Bledsoe has. I'm not sure anybody has. And the other thing I'm not sure that he probably does have that Bledsoe has was a little bit of lack of mobility out of the pocket, which is probably why he's not going to be the number one quarterback pick. The, I think he will be the number one quarterback. I don't think pick. he will be. Really? No. Well, we'll have a bet on that now. But okay. Brad Banks, who does have that mobility, yes. what happened to him? He was throwing right, wide right, wide left by yeah. three, four yards. What happened to him? Well, one of the things that happened was he played a very good USC team. And, you know, it's, it's great to have 25 touchdowns and four interceptions during the year. But when the spotlight showed on these guys, the entire Iowa team fell down. Do you think it works against Ohio State tonight that Iowa got beat by USC that way? Because people thought Iowa was better than Ohio State. I don't think Iowa State cares about any game but their own. Our friend Peter King of Sports Illustrated and HBO says he believes Bill Parcells will do Jerry Jones' dirty work for him and cut Emmett Smith himself. Parcells has a history of walking into a new job and taking down a general. But Jackie, I don't believe that Parcells will cut Emmett Smith to make it easier on Jerry Jones. I don't believe he'll cut Emmett Smith unless he's convinced that Emmett Smith can't play for him. Well, you're absolutely right, because there's no sentiment involved in any decisions Parcell makes. If you look at what happened when he went to New England, the first thing he did was cut Vincent Brown and Andre Tippett, the two undisputed leaders of that defense. When he knew, went to the New York Jets, who does, who does he send packing? Hugh Douglas, who was one of the highly touted young players they had at the time. He doesn't care. If you produce, he'll keep you. If you don't, you're gone. You covered him. Is he worth all this? Is he for worth Dallas? it? He yes. absolutely is. He will have this team in the playoffs within two years. Now, by year four, he and Jones will be feuding like crazy, but it won't matter because they'll be in the Super Bowl. What talent do you see that enables you to believe he'll have that quick turnaround? Oh, see, see, that's the big misnomer about this Dallas team. They have a terrific young defense. They have great team speed on defense. They have this kid, Roy Williams, the safety, who's a star in the making. They have Greg Ellis, a great pass rusher. This team isn't that far away, and Parcells is all about Jack, defense. That's fine, but you have to score some points. They, they have will. no offensive line. I don't think they have a quarterback right now. Their offensive right line now. is better than you think, too. Who do they? What do they do for a quarterback? Well, do they I'll keep tell you the what guy in place? No, no. They'll take the fifth pick in the draft, which they have, and they'll trade it for a veteran guy to bring in. And from what I understand, uh, Parcells likes Jake Plummer. You might see him there next so year. So you're not surprised that after all the years of denying that he was going to go back into the game that he oh, went come back on. in? Tony Kornheiser, Michael Jordan's here in your town. He's on his third comeback. Now, I was told that if I came on this show, I was banned from talking about the NHL under any circumstances Absolutely. unless it involved a catastrophic event. And I think I've got one for you, Tony. The Ottawa Senators, the best team in the NHL this year, failed to pay their players this week after a refinancing deal involving the sale of their team fell through. The players were handed empty envelopes and a letter assuring them this was a one-time situation. Now, with the Buffalo Sabres also in financial trouble, maybe it's time to ask the question, should the NHL be seriously talking about contraction? I'll get to that question, but how did you know? Here's my other question. How did you know Ottawa was the best team in the league? If you gave me five shots, I wouldn't have come up with Ottawa. In terms of... And you admit that on your own show. We don't talk about hockey here. This okay, is a I gift understand. for you. Thank you. In terms of contraction for the league, I don't think you contract a product when they, when they move a lot of ticket sales. They don't have a great TV contract, but they move ticket sales. But they have been using expansion as right. a way to prop up other owners, because expansion guys come in, they pay a fee, and everybody else gets rich. In this particular case, the league must step in and guarantee all these contracts. Don't you think they've got to pay the people immediately? Well, I think this deal is going to go through eventually, but I think the NHL has bigger problems. You mentioned poor TV revenues, and that's one of them. But you know what? In my city, Boston, a huge hockey town, they're not going to see the Bruins, who are a very good team, because they can't afford it. Then that's the first time, because they have raised tickets in every single sport, and it has not hurt attendance yet. 
Jack, I'm glad you're here because there's a developing story with the Philadelphia 76ers that your many years of covering the NBA can help us with. It seems that in the last two road games with the Sixers, at Utah, and then last night at Phoenix, some person or persons have thrown a live rat onto mm. the floor. Last night, the rat didn't come out until the fourth quarter, which means somebody had a live rat in his pants for at least 36 full minutes. Mm. I mean, really, is that a rat in your pocket? You're just happy to see Allen Iverson. I don't know. That rat looks to me like it's on life support. But I think I've figured this out, Tony. I think this is clone aid testing out their cloned rats, throw them onto the court. If Allen Iverson stomps him and he can live to another day, we've got a whole new arena business. Do you like when anybody throws animals alive or dead out onto the Actually, field? Absolutely. Octopuses, I love that. In Detroit. Fish, I love the fish. Fish, who does fish? Uh, my alma mater, UNH, you score a goal in hockey, we throw a fish on it. could be a goldfish, a flounder, live fish, dead fish, whatever we have. This is University of New day. Hampshire? That's right. You were an athlete, you played basketball. Did they throw fish out when you scored? I didn't score enough for them to... <laughs> Nobody came to see me play, Tony. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll head down to the Fiesta Bowl for a pregame report from our Southwest Bureau Chief, Richie Justice. Here's your boy, Dorsey. Hey, guys, look what the neighbors threw out. Beer, 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 bubble of beer, beer, beer. Oh, when we get together, just me and all the lads. Everyone remembers all the fun we've had. Someone's organ. Oh. That calls the Mulsey Canadian Bubba, now dressed in team jerseys and perfect for watching the game. My whole family is on AOL. I use it to research music, to check out dance news and stuff like that. I use AOL as my source for doing all my online banking. I pay my bills online, I pay my credit cards online. I go to stock portfolios and, and all my investments are there. At AOL is where I go to find my entertainment news. I usually go online and see which movie's playing where and order the tickets online. No matter who you are, there's something for you on AOL. Triple X, buy it on DVD. Dangerous, uncivilized. I love his attitude. From the director of The Fast and the Furious. Let's take this to the next level. The Ultimate Extreme DVD. Packed with special features. I live for this! Vin Diesel is Triple X. Buy it now on DVD. Okay. At Buckley's, we're proud of our Jack and Jill cough and cold syrups because most of the people who work here have kids. So we know what's toughest on kids when they have colds. Coughs that keep them up at night and runny noses. Hey, constant runny noses. It's just really important to us that we make medicine that works to relieve cold symptoms for kids. Jack and Jill children's cough and cold syrups. They work. Weeknights, Michael Landsberg hosts a half hour of in-your-face sports talk television. Warning, the show pulls no punches. Off the record, weeknights at 6. We're going to spend the next five good minutes with our Southwest Bureau Chief, Richard Justice of the Houston Chronicle, who joins us from the site of tonight's Fiesta Bowl. And, Richie, we thought we were going to talk to Wilbon, but he went AWOL. Have you seen him? Uh, this is a great week for Wilbon. The parades, the floats, the pageantry, the mascots, the bands, and that's just when he gets to the airport. I think he, uh, I think he flew to Santa Fe for the day because his uh, jet keeps flying over. That would be a frightening thought that Wilbon became such a big star. The big story this week, besides Wilbon, of course, has been Maurice Claret and his criticism of Ohio State in the wake of his inability to fly back to the funeral of his friend. Is there a sense that this is motivating Claret, or will it hurt him for this game? 
Well, I think in the end it's going to motivate him because he's, he's sort of put himself out there on the line by addressing other issues. You know, it started as nothing. It was at the end of an interview session. Somebody asked a very innocent question about his upbringing, and the words, the way he said the words, did not match the gravity of the words. He did not seem angry that first day. He seemed more resigned and more sad, more like a guy grumbling about his boss at the water cooler instead of in front of a bunch of reporters. Now, the second day, he didn't like some of the things that were said, and uh, he was mad the second day, and they didn't let him speak to the press after the second day. My problem is I don't know what he expected Ohio State to do. They say they didn't have the paperwork to give him the money, and I, I don't know what else could have been done at that point. But it definitely added a little spin. Maybe it gave the Buckeyes something else to think about because instead of being asked about Miami constantly, they were asking about, about him. So we'll see how it plays out. We'll know by halftime. Richard, what's the reaction from the boosters? Uh, do they have sympathy for this kid, or is their attitude, hey, you know what, just be quiet and go out and win us the game? I don't think they wanted to see this in the paper. I think some there was some uh, negative reaction from the columnists back in Ohio, and I, I think they thought the second day the, the answer to the question should have been, hey, we'll address this later. Let's think about Miami right now. And at one point he said, uh, hey, I just want to get the game over with. Now, he retracted that, but at that point after you say it, you know, that's what people focus on. If Ohio State loses the game and he gains 13 yards, probably he's probably going to hear about it. Uh, do we get any sense that Claret has maybe rethought this whole NFL policy and, and is now thinking about trying to go pro at all? No, even after this happened, he said emphatically, I'm coming back. I understand this year that physically I'm not up to the wear and tear of a 16-game season. You know, he's a terrific player, but he got hurt. He had a knee injury and a shoulder injury. And I don't, I don't, he said, and if you take him at his word, I, I will be back at Ohio State next year, and I will not challenge the NFL rule on that. Let me get to the game itself. In, in, in the wake of what happened when USC beat Iowa so badly, and so many people who covered the Big Ten thought Iowa could beat Ohio State. Are there any true believers right. left in Ohio State right now? Right. I think you have to think everything has to go right. They have to be able to run the ball. They have to be able to stop Willis McGee, McGahee from running the ball. And they have to get lucky. They have to hope Dorsey, there's a tip ball. They have to hope that Chris Gamble, you know, who's this kid you, you, that's going to be on the field for every game at cornerback and at wide receiver, that he makes a play, returns a punt, returns a kickoff. They have to get fortunate. If Miami plays Miami's game with all those first-round draft picks and all those talent, all the poise, uh, Miami's going to win. Well, let me get to the historical significance here. Uh, Miami's got 34 in a row. This could be 35, closing in on 47 that Oklahoma had. You grew up not far from Oklahoma in Texas. What is the magnitude right. of, of how close they are now? Well, I think, you know, one of the, uh, for us out here, uh, looking in, it's unbelievable. You know, I, I grew up in Texas. Texas won 30 in a row. and it, it seems impossible to do that again. I mean, no team in college football since they lost last two years ago has, lo has, won has lost fewer than four games. So it's just incredible. They've had a few lucky breaks, but basically they've gone every, every day and got it done. Having said that, the word from Larry Coker, their head coach this week, was, we're not talking about it. And players would tell you, we're not talking about it. And you could not make them talk about it. I think he felt that to get them focusing on the streak, and you talk about 1898, you talk about the Oklahoma teams of the 50s, uh, that was too overwhelming. Don't think about it. Just think about doing your job against Ohio State. And that's pretty much what they've done for the last 34 games. You mentioned Coker. Let me get to him before we let you go. He has never lost a game as the coach of Miami. Nobody knows anything about not bad, him. Huh? It's yeah. not like the yeah. guy's a well, potted plant, is it? Uh, no, it's not. I cannot remember when I thought that I would be anything but a professional hockey player. It was either me getting old enough or big enough, I was going to be a professional hockey player. Bobby Hull's Hall of Fame career was a personal journey from Ontario's frozen lakes to the bright lights of NHL superstardom. Through 23 professional seasons, Hull's blazing speed and powerful shot electrified hockey fans from coast to coast as he lived up to his legendary nickname, the Golden Jet. Bobby Hull was born January 3, 1939, in Point Anne, Ontario. And when the local lakes were held in winter's grasp, 
It took a family effort to keep the future superstar off the ice. My early re recollection was being the eldest boy, getting up at six in the morning, putting the porridge pot on with a little water on it, to, in it, and then stoking the fires up and calling my mom and putting the skates on and heading for the, the open air rink. It was an all day deal, uh, uh, skating, and just loved it. And uh, my mother would call and I'd hear her and I wouldn't let on in the evening when I'd be, when I'd have to come home. And uh, then a sister would come over and she couldn't catch me and two sisters would come over and they couldn't catch me. Maxine, Jackie, Barbara, Laura, and then my dad would have to come over. Robert, get home here. Just one more time around the ice, Dad, and away I'd go around the ice. The big deal was to go down on the Bay of Quinney and shovel the snow off and uh, get a game going. And Bobby always said all the other kids in town used to look out their window while the whole boys shoveled off a skating rink, 200 by 60, and uh, pretty soon we'd have enough for a game. That's where you learned how to skate, you learned how to stop, turn this way, turn that way, and you controlled the puck as long as you could. And then when you got checked, you went back after it and, and tried to get it back. That, that was when you learned how to play hockey. Bobby's game would soon outgrow the Bay of Quinney, and as he began to play organized hockey, pre-dawn trips to the local arena became a part of the Hull family routine. There'd be six or eight people in the old Belleville, the Hume Memorial Arena in the morning, and two of them would be my mom and dad. And they were there at six o'clock in the morning, or whenever I was playing, they were there. And my dad would sit at one end of the rink and my mom at the other, because <laughs> my dad didn't think I could ever do anything right. My mother thought that I could do nothing wrong. So when I'd round the net at the one end where my mother was through the through the chicken wire, I'd hear, hear her hollering, a boy, Robert, you can do it. And I'd build up a head of steam and go the length of the ice and go through through everybody, and then I'd either shoot the puck wide of the net over top of it or into the goaltender, and there my dad would be. Why, you couldn't put the puck in the ocean. <laughs> and that's just the way it was. something you bet take a look at this core sample that's the mother load we had to drill through banana to get it it's tim horton's newest muffin banana berry burst banana raspberries blueberries and a delicious fruit filling enjoy one today with a medium coffee and there's a lot more where that came from triple x buy it on dvd dangerous unsimplized Fast and the Furious. Let's take this to the next level. Ultimate Extreme DVD. Packed with special features. Vin Diesel is Triple X. Buy it now on DVD. Dad, can we get your high speed internet? Oh, that's a great idea, Billy. You get multiple connections so the kids don't have to take turns to do homework. That would be so helpful. Lucy can research her papers faster, too. And I can do my homework way faster. Sounds good. Get Shaw High Speed Internet today for just $29.95 a month. Your kids will love it. Philco radio, one of those big old rectangular Philco radios with about 49 knobs on it. None of them did anything to help the reception. Getting ready to start the second period 
And there's he used to listen to the games done by Foster Hewitt, and he was something. I'm telling you, even though he was like in a wind tunnel sometimes where the station would fade in and out, but I can remember vividly back in those days in the, in the 40s and in the, uh, in the 50s how he could how he could describe a game would just bring goose flesh all over my body. We were always uh, those players we heard on the radio, and I'm sure, you know, millions of kids across Canada did the same thing. And, uh, you know, I was always Ted Lindsay. You know, he was my favorite. And Bobby was, uh, you know, Gordie Howe. As radio brought his heroes home to Point Anne, a trip to Maple Leaf Gardens took young Bobby to Toronto's Temple of Hockey for the thrill of his first NHL contest. And I just couldn't get over the, the mass, the size of that building, and everything was so perfectly clean, and, and it was, and that ice was so shiny, and those red lines were so red, and the blue lines were so blue, and those nets, and, and everything that all these nights in front of that old Philco radio, all of a sudden became a reality. That night, Bobby watched the Leafs face the mighty Detroit Red Wings, led by his hero, Gordy Howe. After the game, the young fan had an encounter that left a lasting impression. We stood there and all of a sudden, Gordon Howe parades out in his suit, top coat. Man, oh me. And my dad went in his pocket, tore off the top of his Export A cigarette packet, fished in his pocket and got a little stub of a pencil out. And he said, here, Robert, he said, take this over and get Gordy to give you an autograph. And I said, no way am I going near Gordon Howe. And I hid behind his leg. And of course, I saw the other kids go over and get in their autographs. And they were coming away with their heads still on their shoulders. So I ventured over after a while. And Mr. Howe, could I please have your autograph? Sure, son. He tousled my hair and wrote his name on the cigarette pack. And then I got, I was like, yeah, I had Gordon Howe's autograph. I got real brazen. And Ted Lindsay came out just about that time, and he had a stick in his hand. And I went over to him and I said, Mr. Lindsay, could I please have your hockey stick? He said, I'd give it to you, son, only I promised it to someone down at the Union Station. And away they went, the, the pair of them. At age 10, Bobby Hull attracted the attention of pro scouts. As a standout player with the St. Catharines teepees, his NHL future seemed certain. But when Bobby and his parents met with Chicago Blackhawks general manager Tommy Ivan, they still got quite a shock. Just hit, hit us all like a ton of bricks. And uh, how would you feel um, if I wanted to turn your son pro? And I just about fell off the chair, and my mother lit up like a Christmas tree, and Mom was all for me turning pro. And, or she, she knew that I'd, that was, that was my life. That's what I'd dreamed about since she couldn't remember and I could remember. In 1957, Bobby joined a last place Chicago team. When the star rookie struggled with the transition to the NHL, coach Rudy Pillis had the solution. When I went to Chicago, played center my first year, and then Rudy Pillis came halfway through the year to be our coach. Rudy Pillis knew that I was too dumb to be a centerman. He put me on left side, and I was mad as an old wet hen because I, I wasn't there, I wasn't around that biscuit. But it didn't take me long to figure out that the wing was where I should be. With his speed and strength, Bobby was a natural on the wing. But in 1959, during a postseason exhibition tour of Europe, the advice of veteran teammates added a whole new dimension to Hull's game. We had to tell Bobby, Bobby, you're not going to get go from behind your end through everybody and score a goal. We said, we'll get the puck to you. All you have to do is stand there and shoot it in. I hadn't passed since Minor Bantam. <laughs> I, did, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't pass the puck. And now all of a sudden I learned, give it off, get in position to get in position to shoot the puck. And that's what I did. And I said, this is the way this game should be played. And I came home and told my dad, I came home from Europe and uh, told my dad, I said, Dad, I'm going to win the scoring championship this year. He said, yeah, you and with how many other helpers? And I won the scoring championship that year. I saw him change from 
a, a star to a superstar. And he came back that next year and he was a Golden Jet. Did you hear that? We're not. I don't like to know what you hide in the city for cities. Hundreds of crop signs are appearing worldwide. Ground forces have been assembled. Oh! Mel Gibson, Kirk Cousins, and Night Shyamalan's signs. Own it on video and Vista Series DVD January 7th. You have done me a great injustice, Johnny. This is not fit for a man. New Blistex Clear Advance for men, Johnny. For men. It's shine free with tough protection. And I know about protection. New Blistex Clear Advance for men. Hey guys, look what the neighbors threw out. Someone's organ. <laughs> Back from the Canadian Bubba, now dressed in team jerseys and perfect for watching the game. Chili? Chili? You look downright cold. You know a bowl of chili? Yes! Let me get my boots, we'll go to Wendy's. Wendy's $1.39 Super Value Menu has delicious chili and hot baked potatoes. Wendy's, it's better here. Tune into the score now and score tonight weeknights on the score for the Molson Hockey Update. Brought to you by the Molson Canadian Bubba Collector Tent. Dressed for a limited time in team jerseys. It's perfect for watching the game with the guys. In 1960, Bobby Hull won the first of his three NHL scoring titles. And the following year, he would lead Chicago to their first Stanley Cup victory in 23 years. In 1962, he joined Rocket Richard and Boom Boom Jeffrey on third player to reach the 50-goal plateau. And four years later, he would eclipse that long-standing mark on his way to a 54-goal campaign. And all of a sudden at the Chicago Stadium, I got lucky and, and scored the 51st against uh, uh, Cesar Maniego. And uh, it wasn't so much breaking the record, because as we look back, it was inevitable. Either I was going to do it or someone was going to do it, and so many have since then but that was back when 50 goals meant something that's back when we played a 70 game schedule or, or 72 and the games were one to nothing two to one three to two games but just the tremendous ovation that that chicago those chicago fans gave me at that stadium that night they just wouldn't quit Bobby was definitely the star in Chicago. We weren't the Chicago Blackhawks. We were Bobby Hull and the Chicago Blackhawks. And, and there was, it, it, I don't think there was a sense of envy on the team. There was just a sense that, ooh, something is different now than there has been in the past. With the hardest shot in the game, Bobby Hull was a threat to score in every shift. But his powerful shot was to become an even greater threat with a little help from a teammate. Stan Makita was the inventor of the hook stick. We didn't have any torches then. We didn't know how to heat the blades. We just run it under the hot tap, the tap water and let it run on it until it got soft. And then we'd put it under the door and put a chair under the handle and leave it there all night. And then when we'd come back in the morning, it'd be about a half circle. And as Brother Dennis would say, it's either top corner or second balcony. <laughs> Some of us got so we could use it pretty good. Others, they were a little wild with it.
the way he could shoot it and the big hooks they used to have with it, uh, the puck used to do tricks. If it wasn't for uh, Bobby, uh, uh, we'd probably still have some uh, goaltenders that play without the mask. He would shoot that puck and he would terrify the goaltenders with one and right under the chin and the next one would go in the bottom corner. Bobby all coming down the wing at me certainly was scary, there's no doubt about that, but I wasn't, I wasn't afraid to get hurt by any means. I had one job to do and that's to try to stop Bobby from scoring. But uh, no, he, he scored a lot of the goals from just about 30, 40 feet because his shot was so powerful I couldn't see it. And anybody say that you could see a shot coming in at him like that is talking out of their hat. Probably the only guy that uh, terrorized me a little bit, of course, is Bobby Hull. He shot to make the goalie a little afraid. And then his next shot would be down low and you've already lifted four feet up in the air. And you'd hear that magic word, goal scored by Bobby Hull. <laughs> I would not purposely shoot at anyone's head. Now, that isn't to say I wouldn't shoot them up kinda high and get close to their heads, but I wouldn't be shooting at their heads. If I was off at a bad angle, the shift was just about over. First shift out there, generally. I'd zing it by them just so that they could just give them something to think about, and it would hit the glass and go all the way down the ice. Gave them all that time to think about it. With me skating off the ice until next shift, what's he gonna do next? <laughs> With 12 All-Star selections and five times reaching the 50-goal plateau, Bobby Hull was one of the greatest players the game had ever seen. But even after all his success, Bobby's fondest memories come from facing his boyhood idol, Gordy Howe. When we got playing head-on-head -head against one another, some of the greatest games that you would ever want to see in that old Olympian Detroit, just up and down and up and down, and just he out trying to play me and me trying to outplay him, and every once in a while I'd get lucky. I never ever offered to challenge how in any other way but just trying to outplay him, outskate him, outthink him, outpass him, out shoot him, and, and what have you. I was just out there uh, to play the game the way it was supposed to be played, and he appreciated that. Most people love Bobby Hull, and for good reason. I mean, the, the guy could score goals like few other players. Uh, the guy was marvelous uh, to look at. Uh, he was what, what you wanted to look like, even if you weren't playing hockey. He had the power to fend people off with one arm, just throw them off, you know. Uh, if you weren't uh, in good position, then you were gonna get pushed aside, and he could do it. He had great strength in his lower body with his legs and, and upper body strength that in our day, nobody used to push weights around, but uh, so you were naturally strong uh, or you weren't, and he was naturally strong. He somehow uh, got the job done even with two or three guys uh, hanging on him. I mean, people were all over him. People, were, I mean, there was a penalty every time he was out on the ice. He wasn't taken care of, you know, by the referees like they take care of superstars today. Santa didn't come through for you this year? It's your own gift from Rogers AT&T Wireless. Imagine getting the hottest phone of the season. Stepping onto the ice was the beginning of a dream. Scoring 378 goals in a single season of peewee hockey was the beginning of a legend. In five unforgettable hours, the all-new Legends of Hockey the second season features the players and plays of a lifetime, including Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, Dave Keon, Ken Dryden, Yvonne Cornoyer, Phil Esposito, and many more. Showcased in this Collector Edition Deluxe Box Set or Feature Pack DVD. Legends of Hockey. In fine stores everywhere. You have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger, to redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. 
In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 90 Health Club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure and check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web at bowflexultimate.com today. The new Bowflex for ultimate results. Among the most popular athletes of his day, Bobby Hull was one of the sports for superstars. A marquee player who packed arenas everywhere he played. As much as the fans loved Bobby, Bobby loved the fans. He was a player that could bring people to their feet. And uh, we have to cherish those because they're special. You know, they, they have uh, either a charisma with the fans or an unusual uh, skill. Uh, with Bobby, it was a flair. He had a charisma off the ice that was uh, unbelievable, really, and a smile that, uh, well, uh, call him the Golden Jet for a lot of reasons, and it wasn't just the hair flying, his, uh, his uh, handsome face, and, uh, and uh, he was a poster boy for, for our game. I think that he's a wonder, been a wonderful salesman for the game of hockey because he does give the people back something after he's through, and uh, not many do that. Even in the days when they weren't being paid for their autograph, as so many athletes are being paid today, with Bobby Hull, I kid you not, he'd keep that bus waiting for an hour and get everything signed before he'd get on the bus. One time in Montreal, Bobby kept us waiting an hour and a half on the bus while he landed up signing autographs. Now, it was just interesting that I say he kept us waiting. In effect, what he was really doing was representing us out there while he was signing autographs. And of course, there's always guys on the fourth line, should be on the fifth line. They're at the back of the bus and they're saying, come on, let's go, let's go. And Billy turned around and said, if you were late, we'd go. We're waiting for Bobby. <laughs> It's so very, very important because I know I've seen it happen where guys have not allowed these hero worshippers to get close to them. And it has had a lasting effect on these, these kids. And I think it's important for those kids to grow up, as I did, getting Gordon Howe's autograph and being around Ted Lynch. It's important for we hero worshippers to have heroes. wisdom about uh, the game in general and obviously you're playing for your teammates and to win but beyond that you're playing to entertain the fans uh, those are the people that are important uh, they come they pay their money to watch you play uh, they come to watch your team play and the, and the NHL play and you have to be a part of that and you have to entertain them uh, and and when the game's over it's not over yet when you're out and and someone asks for your autograph you give them your autograph in 1972, the newly formed World Hockey Association needed credibility, and they wanted Hull. When Chicago refused to match the rival league's multi-million dollar offer, Bobby signed with the Winnipeg Jets. That's a terrific contract, and I really appreciate it, and I know my family does too. And my main concern right now is that uh, we make this league go, and it'll be great for not only the, the owners, but all the players that uh, are playing now and those to come. Bobby dominated the WHA, and in 1979, the rival leagues merged. That season, Bobby finished his career with the NHL's Hartford Whalers, alongside his boyhood idol, Gordie Howe. But hockey's golden jet will always be remembered as the icon of the Chicago Blackhawks. When I retired, I resigned myself to the fact that I was not going to find anything in this whole world that gave me the same thrill that I got out of grabbing that biscuit behind one net and lugging it the length of the ice and getting a shot on the other, on the, on the other net. But every time I watch Brett Hull play, that feeling is erasing. I get as much kick out of watching my son play than I did playing myself. 
to look at that cup and look at the 61 Blackhawks and see Bobby Hull and then Brett Hull and, and knowing where we came from and how different our careers are, but in the same breath, how the same they are is, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it, but it is, uh, it has been truly an honor to be an NHL player and to have won the Stanley Cup and to have uh, made the whole legacy continue on. I was one of the fortunate red-blooded Canadian kids that made a, a boyhood dream come true. Being able to compete with these guys, uh, the Bathgates and the Howes and the Richards and the Bellivos and the Jeffreyans and, and the Mahavliches and all that group and, and come out on top. It's, it's a great, great feeling, a great feeling of achievement. Okay, boys, I gotta get some skating. We'll see you later, all right? the score weekend i'm caroline frolic alongside ryan payton and uh, as we were saying earlier what a difference a week makes this mm -hmm. time last week we had no idea what was going on in the nfl playoffs we were just trying to wrap our brains around it this weekend only four games two of them today one of them just wrapped up moments ago as for the colts and the jets last time they met in the playoffs well payton and i weren't even born mm -hmm. but uh, a certain qb made a very bold and historic prediction that's true good we don't have headaches finally this weekend <laughs> joe namath broadway joe made this prediction as he was sitting on the pool side deck before Super Bowl three in 1969 he said we are going to win the Super Bowl now their opponents were the Baltimore Colts mm -hmm. and you know what they were 17 point underdogs the Jets were but Broadway Joe lived up to his name and his statement they won 16 7 he was named MVP but we've had to wait 34 long years wow. before the Colts and the Jets can meet again in the playoffs and this afternoon they did Chad Pennington for New York Peyton Manning for Indianapolis it was all Jets right from the get-go first quarter Chad Pennington, many are comparing him right now to Joe Montana. Can you believe that? That's a lot to live up to. Richie Anderson does the rest here in that 56-yard pass and run. Longest passing play in the Jets' postseason history, 7-0. Second quarter, Pennington eyeing little Wayne Krebet. And he's got it inside the 30-yard line. Led to a field goal, 10-0. Then on the ensuing kickoff, look at Troy Walters. For Indianapolis, he has it. But then he loses it after a 21-yard return. Ray Mickens recovers, so the Jets continue their domination on the offensive side of things. Pennington to Lavernius Coles, first down. Then Pennington hands it off to Lamont Jordan. Like the parting of the Red Sea right there. 12-yard gain, and that was capped off by the Jordan going untouched on the left side. One down, touchdown run, 17-0 New York. First and goal, still first half. Pennington to Santana Moss in the corner. Look at this catch. Keeps those feet in bounds. And you know what? He's excited, and so too is this fellow. The Colts and the Jets, 16-7, 34 years ago. It's now 41-0, and it is simply over. The Jets simply dominated this game. It's their first postseason win since 1998, and this score of 41-0 matched the last playoff game at Giants Stadium where the Giants beat the Vikings for the 2000 NFC title. Now some numbers for you. Peyton Manning was simply dreadful. He was 14-31 for 137 yards. Marvin Harrison, who set an NFL record with 143 receptions, had just four in this game. So the New York Jets await the winner of the Brown Steelers game that goes tomorrow to see if they'll face Tennessee or Oakland in the next one. 
All right, the Falcons and Packers are just about to get underway at Lambeau Field, where the weather is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And for all you kids out there, that means freezing. Now, Brett Favre loves that. He's 35 and 0 there when the temperature is 34 degrees or below. Now, Favre's played in, I don't know, Favre's played in 16 postseason games. While on the other side, it's Michael Vick's very first trip to the playoffs. In fact, it's a Falcons' first trip to the postseason since 1998 when they went to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Well, it's a usual busy Saturday night in the NHL. 13 games set to go, including the finale of the home-at-home -home series with the New Jersey Devils and Toronto Maple Leafs. Jersey took the first of the series in a 2-0 shutout last night. And tonight, the series moves to the ACC, where the Leafs are unbeaten in 11. While Toronto's still battling the injury bug, there is some good news. Alexander McGinley made his return last night. And Nick Andropov, Carl Pilosh, and Shane Corson were all cleared to play and were expected to be back tonight, but none of them are on the ice during this game. And it's Jersey with a great chance early. Devils on the power play. Eliash, point shot, tipped by Yuri Pisek, and Belfort makes the stop. And then he also stops Sergei Breland. There's more from the Devils off the faceoff. Belfort again coming up huge, stopping Scott Niedemeyer. Eliash and Breland. But late in the first, Leafs get it going. Paul Healy. Aaron Gavey out to Tom Fitzgerald. He nets his third. It's Tom Fitzgerald. Wow. The AHL, AHL line. line yeah. yeah, AHL line. There you go. And the Leafs are up one to nothing. In fact, Jersey outshot the Leafs 17-7 in the first period. They just started the second. And for all you kids out there, Sundin missing his fourth game with a sore shoulder. All right, the Maple Leafs and the Devils chasing the Eastern Conference leading Ottawa Senators. They may not have a lot of money, but they haven't lost too many games either at home against the Sabres of Buffalo. Alice Kotelik nets his seventh of the season, and it's one nothing Sabres. They are into the second period of play. Well, as I mentioned, Ottawa has not lost many games. Lately, they've dropped three of the last 26. As for the Sabres, uh, they have lost a lot. They have just two wins in 15 games away from home this year. We'll keep your post. For the Hurricanes and the Bruins now, and the that's the Fleet Center. That's where the Bruins are winless in four of their last five. There. In the first, Joe Thornton out to change that. Carries it in. Let's go of the wrister for his 21st. Just 22 seconds in. And it's one nothing game. With the Canes on the power play, though. Aaron Ward's point shot goes wide, and Ronnie Francis there kicks the puck to Jeff O'Neill. He nets his 14th. That ties it up at one. And then Glenn Murray gets it to Mike Knubel. Archer's Irving gets a stick on it. The puck then hits the crossbar and stays out. Best uh, best goalie in, in the world, the, that crossbar there. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, still tied at one in the second period. The Canes have lost four straight and uh, we'll have some work to do. They're tied. Holy's best friend, that's for sure. Okay, Bobby Holik, Matthew Barnaby, and Eric Lindros, all friends, all teammates. They all play for the Rangers. They're home against the Washington Capitals and it's Matthew Barnaby, the big 88. Eric Lindros sneaking in. He scores his 12th and that made it one nothing Rangers. That is where we speak. And how about that? We have Lindros, Barnaby, Holik off the top. And they're all in score shoot. I like when that happens. That, that's enough. Great job by the crew. One nothing nice. Rangers into the second period of play. All right, a score only here. The Coyotes have one four straighter in Columbus, but look at that. Columbus up 2 nothing in the second period. Cylinder and Pronger with goals in that one. Keep around the ticker for the latest. The Islanders whip Boston last night 8-4. to four. They're down one nothing tonight to the Pittsburgh Penguins, who are trying to win the Islanders or anywhere. Their sixth straight game for the first time since 1993. And look who's on the score sheet. Mario Lemia, goal number 19. The assist to Alexei Kovalev and Jan Hodin. Couple struggling teams just got underway at St. Louis. The Lightning will try for their third victory in nine games, while the Blues have lost two straight and have been outscored 9-2 during that skid. Obviously, no score in this one. This game just underway down in Nashville. The Predators at home against the Chicago Blackhawks. No score between these two teams. The Hawks are riding an unbeaten streak that's at seven games. And Jocelyn Thibault is a big reason for that. He's lost just once since December the 6th and comes into this game with the second best goals against average in the league at 1.95. Second two, Dallas's Marty Turk. All right, it's time for us to take a quick break here on the score, but there are three other Canadian teams in action tonight. We'll get you prepared for that, and we'll also set you up for tomorrow's huge gold medal game with Canada and Russia. The World great. Juniors cannot wait. Stay with us.
Triple X. Buy it now on DVD. Hey guys, look what the neighbors threw out. Someone's organ. <laughs> the Canadian Bubba, now dressed in team jerseys and perfect for watching the game. Watch those, baby. Let's rock and roll, baby. Friday at 6.30, the score on the NFL with Tim McAuliffe, Greg Sansoni, and Ron Meyer bring you closer to the action and information you want. Get all the previews and inside stories with analysis from Ron Meyer. And the Bear stops by with his weekly picks against the spread. Tune in every Friday at 6.30 for all you need to know. The score on the NFL. It don't get no better than this. A couple of teams who have been riding high as of late take to the ice at Calgary tonight. And the Flames look to remain unbeaten under coach Daryl Sutter. While the Minnesota Wild look to extend their unbeaten streak to five games. The score's Deb Matichka has the pregame story from Calgary. Jim Playfair should find his transition from the baby flames to the big club to be a relatively smooth one. While still a player himself some 10 years ago, Playfair won an IHL championship title under head coach Daryl Sutter. Then as a coach himself, Playfair led the Flames AHL affiliate to a Calder Cup victory. That championship team happened to include a number of players playing for Calgary right now. After playing for Daryl, it's nice to work with him on this side, actually. <laughs> He's very clear and firm on what he wants, and I think the players, uh, there'll be no mistake in what, what, what is expected of them. And, and uh, as a coaching staff, uh, his philosophy is we work together to get the job done, and, and uh, the responsibilities are shared amongst everybody, and, and it's a very simple process that he's after, and uh, it, it's exciting. I had him for most of uh, two years ago. Uh, he was a great coach. Like We did everything right that year. We had a great team, but we had great leadership behind the bench from him. Uh, he came in there, and it was a brand new team to him, and it took us a while to learn his system. And, but after that, January, February came, and the team was unbelievable, and we ended up winning the championship. He's played himself, so we, I mean, as a defenseman, uh, I don't know if he played much in the NHL, but I know he played quite a while in the, in the A and the I. Uh, when, when he did play, so you know he knows uh, he knows the game really well. He's been there, he's done that, um, and he's just going to bring a lot of enthusiasm to the team. With our young defense it was really important that it, that at some point, either this season or next season, prior to the season, that we brought in a, somebody that can work with those young defensemen. And, and um, I trust Jimmy for what he can bring us in that area. Playfair makes his debut behind the Flames bench tonight versus Minnesota. The Wild, who were thought to have cooled prior to the Christmas break, come into Calgary on a four-game unbeaten streak. The key to a Flames victory tonight? Avoid overtime. The Wild hold the best overtime record in the league, and in two of three previous meetings versus...